Having the right people with the right dynamics, we all recognize that everybody's got their own part to play. I mean, everybody works together. We have field technicians, but they recognize that we got an office staff and we got guys in the warehouse that are supporting them out in the field. I came in not having any experience at all, and everybody was really warm and welcoming as far as, you know, learning new things and, and, and on the pace as far as my own pace. I think uh, one of the favorite things about Seneca for me are the people. A lot of great talent, you know, and just really fun people to talk to and, and to be with. Uh, we continue to grow and advance and go into new states, uh, new opportunities. So it's, it's been a great home for me and I think it could be a great home for others as well. I transferred from Waste Solutions to our construction division and I, it was a lateral move but a lot more opportunities to grow within the company and I'm just hoping to continue um, the efficiency and process improvement which are things that I really enjoy doing and Seneca has given me an opportunity to explore that. Continuously throughout my entire career with Seneca they've always been able to allow me to change up my role based on what I what I was needing what I wanted and get to kind of choose where my success is going to be. A couple of first days I was here, I was, I don't know, maybe fortunate enough to meet the owner and his son. And uh, I mean, usually you don't, you don't do that, you know, but they, they're, you know, they walk through the building and, and, you know, they're like, you know, one of the people here. To live a life and be solely focused on profit is pretty shallow. I mean, it matters. That's what drives everything. But it's not the, the, the end all be all, right? And it can certainly be impacted by only focusing myopically on that one thing. I mean, we, we accomplish what we set out to do as a business, but more importantly, we set out and, and helped other people accomplish what they wanted to in their careers. We helped our customers grow their businesses. We really were a part of something really great. Seneca's always been encouraging to like, put your family first. I wanted to be able to drop my kid off in the morning, so if there were weather delays, you know, two hour school delays, um, I would just call and say, hey, like, I can't drop my kid off. And they were like, oh, that's fine. Like, we'll see you when you get here. I've never worked for a company that's been so welcoming to that. When I moved down here, the primary reason was my wife was from here and her mom had advanced Alzheimer's. So when we were kind of on the fence where we were gonna move, it made sense for us to be down here. And so as a technician, that's when I was working in the field and I was probably about two hours away on an install. Well, that's when I got the phone call that my mother-in-law had slipped and they were moving her into hospice because she had broken her hip. I made one phone call and they dispatched two technicians to come relieve me. You know, even my father-in-law was like, wow, you've got a great group of guys you work with. I'm like, no doubt. They could trust that their team is going to catch them if they ever need a safety net. We're there for you. Anybody that's looking for a challenge, you know, that wants to use their hands, use their head, it's a unique trade that we that we do. I would say come work here. I mean, if you're looking for a career, then 
this is the place for you. It's a Friday afternoon in West Des Moines, but the weekend starts now. A pair of national title hopefuls have traveled westward to kick off the Central Conference playoffs. King Sammer carries with them a 10 match unbeaten streak, but Kalamazoo has never lost to the kids from Kentucky. It's part one of a playoff doubleheader as the four seed and five seed collide with their seasons on the line. Good evening and welcome to live coverage of the USL League 2 National Playoffs on the Central Iowa Sports Network. With Justin Forster alongside me, my name is Danny Cotula saying welcome in to the press box at Top Valley Stadium in West Des Moines, Iowa. Together it's a pleasure to bring you live coverage of the USL League 2 National Playoffs on 11 Sports and on YouTube. Justin, welcome in. Fantastic matchup between these two. Should be a cracker, a proper four versus five seed matchup. Two teams who are very, very evenly skilled evenly talented they've kept a lot of their players from last season they've kept a lot of their players through this 2022 season I think we're going to be see the best of both these teams tonight so it just goes to show because there'll be continuity between both teams because they've kept a squad together not just through this season but throughout the, the season before as well you know I think I think it's going to be an interesting matchup today with you know King's Hammer will probably start out in the 4-3-3 versus the 3-4 three system but from what I've seen previously Kalamazoo play with wing backs they'll play with the three at the back and you've got to watch out for a fang he's the center back very strong he's good in set plays he gets forward for every set play so I think that's going to be interesting but they do play a box midfield from what I've noticed two sixes two tens the tens like to break forward and support the nine and when you get to a, a situation where this could be a, a whole weekend affair right I, if all goes well for both these sides. They'll be playing again on Sunday against the winner of the matchup to come between Des Moines Menace and Caw Valley FC. How difficult is it to focus on this match here when you've got the prospect of Sunday in the back of your mind as well? Well, I think you just take care of the present, you know, so take care of business today and then figure out what you've got to do for Sunday because the second match is later. It's seven o'clock tonight. You'll determine who you're playing after that. So there's a lot of legwork behind it, analysis. I know that most of the staff and the players Obviously, of the winning team will stick around to watch that. So present first and then look to the future. We've gotten to speak to the uh, coaching stats of both sides. We were speaking with Kings Hammer earlier before this match started. Uh, what stood out to you from that coaching staff as far as how they're preparing for today? Well, what they were, what they were looking for is to see what Kalamazoo come out with first and their, sh and their team shape and try and match them up. But I think they'll come out, Kings Hammer will come out 4-3-3. I think that's how they'll start the game and adjust from there. It's going to be hard to break down certain areas of the field. And I, I, I think in the midfield, again, it's going to be won and lost in the midfield. And if Kalamazoo come out with a, a four-strong midfield in a box, I think they're going to have to look to match that up somewhere along the line because they don't want a, any defensive overloads. Well, in a matchup with so much even talent across the pitch and across both sides of the pitch, it could come down to those matchups, couldn't it, and those little strategic pieces. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think set plays definitely for Kalamazoo. Uh, in the last game, they scored a free kick from outside the box, off, off the post, rebound. And then Ifang scored the first goal off a set piece, corner. So I think set pieces for Kalamazoo, definitely something to watch out for today. Well, more to bring you on this matchup and what it will entail between Kings Hammer FC and Kalamazoo FC here at Valley Stadium. All that coming up next with more pregame coverage in a moment right here on CISN. The Chicken in Orilla is a classic roadhouse joint serving chicken any way you want. All hand cut, hand breaded and 100% satisfying. Chicken, mmm, mmm, just like your mama used to make. Bring the whole fam for all their favorites and chicken so good you'll know why we could only call ourselves the chicken. In the middle of nowhere, but just minutes from everywhere. 
With over 260 beers on tap, El Bait Shop isn't just another craft beer bar. It's the best. Beer lovers know El Bait Shop, 200 Southwest 2nd, Des Moines. At DeArmond Ford Indianola and DeArmond Automotive Knoxville, we want you to experience the DeArmond difference. My dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure your ownership experience is exceptional. We're completing phase two of our major reconstruction project at our Indianola location, providing a state-of-the-art customer lounge and waiting area and soon-to-be all-new showroom, reinvesting back into our communities. DeArmond Ford Indianola and DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Experience the DeArmond difference today. DeArmondAuto.com. Missing a quality, home-cooked meal? You know, the kind mom used to make. Lucky for you, we found her recipe book. Welcome to the High Life. Welcome to the Champagne of Bars. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. To me, it means being there 24 7, rain or shine, during storms, after storms. Being a first responder to the community, to my customers. Being there to get the customers back on and to see the smiles on their face, to provide the kind of reliability that we can hold our heads high about. And we want to keep our customers safe. Safety's first around here. And that's rewarding. Welcome back to the booth at Valley Stadium for USL League 2 playoff coverage live on YouTube and 11 Sports. Justin Forster joining myself, Danny Gadula, with continued pre-match coverage. Justin, let's get a look at what this four-seeded Kalamazoo team will bring. They won their division, the Great Lakes division this season. A lot of talent in that division. They ended up taking first place. Give us an idea based on their last match of what they'll bring to the table this afternoon. Yeah, as we take a look at these highlights here, I tell you what, Kalamazoo, very, very strong, like we spoke about in the midfield. As you can see, a set play, corner coming in, Ifang on the far post, getting in front of the defender, nodding it past or through the goalkeeper's legs. He's dangerous on set pieces, definitely is. Here's the free kick coming in, and Martinez with the rebound. It was off the post. Martinez was there just to finish it off. Here, the third goal was started by Matt Whelan, laid it off, carried on his run. Tremendous pace, breaking the line. Just breaking into the box and a little dink over the goalkeeper. Near post to put Kalamazoo 3-0 up. Oakland came back into the game here as the ball. Alex Steinwasher just managing to get onto a ball nodded forward. And here we have a penalty. And it's Alex Delu sending the keeper the wrong way. Just a little dink over the keeper's head. There was a consolation from... For Kalamazoo, penalty just to go there, O'Riden, O'Riden with the penalty. And a 4 2 result it was. Kalamazoo taking uh, quite the, the record and the winning streak into this one, but both teams are as well. Kings Hammer with a 10 match unbeaten streak. Kalamazoo had that kind of mid season slump, but they've been much better in the last four or five match days. They've won four and drawn one in their last five. Let's take a look at that Kings Hammer side. Ten matches unbeaten, of course. They're the five seed, finished second place in the Valley Division behind South Bend Lions. Let's take a look at their most recent match against Dayton Dutch Lions. Well, Kings Hammer, Ben Demangi got the first two goals for them in this match against the Dutch Lions, as you can see here. The Dutch Lions on the ball in their own half. Lou, give away possession cheaply. Demangi onto the Play, ball played through is fantastic. Just think the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper was caught in no man's land. Demanji got the second goal. There's a bit of a goal melee here. Ball just bounced around, nodded on. Down on the chest, he picked up the rebound. Thank you very much to the goalkeeper's right-hand side. Firmly placed away. Third goal coming in. Build-up play by King's Hammer. Lovely ball down the line, and somehow 
They got to the ball on the right hand side, passed the defender, ball played through. Thank you very much. What a great ball in there for Sam Robinson just to place the ball. No problem at all. Jerome Dolly, Jolly latched on to the third, fourth goal. Kings Hammer 4 1 up. There was a consolation goal, an own goal by Dayton, the center forward for Kings Hammer. But at the end of the day, it was 4 1. Yeah, comprehensive performance. Dayton, one of the lower finishers, but still, that Valley Division has a lot of talent all the way through it. And Kings Hammer made pretty quick work of that latter half of their schedule for sure. You mentioned Ben Damji. He's on the bench this evening. He's got seven goals from just five matches this season. An electric score, but in front of him is Taylor Reinhardt wearing the number 16 today. Eight goals from seven matches not to be outdone. He's from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and he will provide a spark. Plenty of storylines for both teams this afternoon, but one thing that stands out from both is how many returning role players there are from 2021 to this 2022 side, and that's the case for both sides. For me, that indicates a positive culture that quality players want to return to, Justin. Yeah, it's continuity, and, uh, you know, the players get to know each other, know their tendencies in training, not just in training, off the field, on the field, and that's how you pick up relationships. And I think it's great that when you look at si uh, situations like that, Kings Hammer have, have kept a squad together for, for a couple of years. Well, a quick pause from us, but we'll be back in a moment with more coverage live from Valley Stadium on CISN. The largest selection of German beer in the world, you'll find it at the Hessen House. Doppelbox to Oktoberfest to Hefeweizens and Dunkels. There's no passport needed for the deliciously different beer and food at the Hessen House. So grab your friends and make it a fun night out. The Hessen House, 4th and Court, Des Moines. Hi, it's Amanda with Holt Plumbing and Heating. With inventory tight, Holt not only anticipated the need, but took the risk of stocking up on our most popular products. While our competitors scramble to find furnaces, air conditioners, and water heaters, we have plenty of stock ready to be installed. Even though we have extra product, now we see demand at an all-time high. To sweeten the deal, we are also offering 0% financing on your new purchase. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. There's a new spin on casual dining near Drake University. Lucky Horse Beer and Burgers. Craveable faves, flatbreads, delicious burgers, frozen cocktails, and a crazy cool vibe. Get to Lucky Horse Beer and Burgers today. There's more Iowa in the Iowa Tap Room than you may realize. Housed in a building nearly as old as Iowa itself. The Iowa Tap Room greets you with a harvest of 120 Iowa craft beers on tap from all corners of the state. And the food doesn't get much more Iowa than this. The Iowa Tap Room, all Iowa beer, one amazing place. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. <laughs> Minutes away from kickoff in the opening round of the USL League 2 National Playoffs. Here in the Central Conference, it's Kings Hammer and Kalamazoo facing off, while Caw Valley and Des Moines Menace wait in the wings to do the same later tonight. The past week has been a complicated one with playoff scenarios and seeding, but now it's all very simple. Win or your season ends. One talented team will meet that fate today, but the other will keep their lofty title hopes alive. Another break's up next, but don't go away. Starting lineups in the opening whistle are on the other side, right here on CISN. 
The Royal Mile, where everyone's a wee bit British. The Royal Mile is downtown Des Moines' living room with classic pub favourites. Pair them with a glass of whiskey or an expertly poured Guinness. It's bloody brilliant. The Royal Mile, a proper British pub. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and it's going to be an interesting patio furniture season this year. We have ordered a ton of merchandise, but due to supply chain issues, it's coming in a truckload at a time all summer long. If you want the best patio furniture, check early and check often. If you want to custom order your furniture, get in here as soon as you can to give your furniture the best chance to arrive this summer. Fireplace Superstore, Iowa's best patio furniture selection, just east of I-35 on Douglas Avenue. Not too many places hit all the right notes. But when it comes to great atmosphere and delicious scratch-made food, Truman's is the name to know. Game days are for Chiefs fans, but every day is for the food fans. Truman's get to know us by name. Need orthopedic care today? DMOS Orthopedic Urgent Injury Clinics in Ankeny and West Des Moines are open six days a week. No appointment necessary. Our two convenient walk-in clinics offer you full access to dedicated orthopedic specialists. Wait times and costs are generally less than an ER visit. Check hours of operation and wait times instantly at DMOS.com. DMOS Urgent Injury Clinics in Ankeny and West Des Moines. Helping you get back to living. The Central Conference Playoffs in USL League 2 finally here. We're ready to give you the starting lineups for this one between the five-seed Kings Hammer FC and the four-seed Kalamazoo FC. Let's get you going with your first set of lineups for Kings Hammer. In goal, it'll be number 99, Bryant Pratt, 6'2 goalkeeper from Columbus, Ohio. The back line looks this way. Robbie Burlew on the right side of defense. Carson Kendall and Lalas Ayerty are the center backs. Paul Hernandez from Spain is the left back in central midfield. Taylor Dyson will play the six role in defensive midfield. Mikkel Goling of Copenhagen, Denmark is your left center midfielder on his opposite side in central midfield, Aiden Abril. Taylor Reinhardt is the striker up front. He'll wear number 16, leading goal scorer with eight this year. He's also played in MLS next with Indiana Fire. Tony Pineda is the left winger and on his right side, Maloon Gumbale from Cincinnati, Ohio, a Walnut Hills High School alum. Looking at the other side of things for Kalamazoo FC in goal, it'll be Hunter Moore, 6'3", 184 goalkeeper, quite a tall figure and excellent reactions as well. He's played all 14 matches this year and made 31 saves. Federico Russo, Paul Efang, and Adrian Lara are the center backs in order. It looks like a 3-4-1-2, if you will. Dara O'Rourden is a left defensive midfielder from Cork, Ireland. He's got four goals and two assists in that defensive midfield role. Alongside him is Chase Strine from Traverse City, Michigan. Outside wings look like they'll be Lo Matt Lockwood, 11 matches this season. He's got a sociality degree from Michigan State. Then Adrian Corona is on the left side, has 12 matches under his belt with one assist. Tom Cooklin levy is the attacking midfielder. And up top, Matt Whelan and Pepe Martinez. That's how Kalamazoo will line up this afternoon. So Kalamazoo and Kings Hammer, all to play for, everyone trying to keep their season alive, and I think both these teams are capable of springing upsets and finding their way for deep playoff runs, but it all starts now, Justin. You've got to calm the nerves. You want to get a couple touches, I think, and make sure you're, you're emotionally prepared for this one. Yeah, Kalamazoo have had the experience of being here before. They, they know what this is about as an organization. Kings Hammer, they're going to look to get the nerves out. Well, both teams, in fact, but Kings Hammer will probably try and get the nerves out early by keeping the ball, making sure each player does the right thing, first tackle, first pass. I know that Kalamazoo do like to keep the ball and just gain some kind of momentum as, uh, as the game gets going. And the game has gotten going here at Valley Stadium, 10 seconds in. And Kalamazoo to kick off. Not a whole lot going for them in possession. Kings Hammer had an early throw. And in midfield, this is where they like to hold on to possession. It's played out to the left side. This will be Mikel Golan. 
In midfield, Taylor Dyson sends it forward. Golings on it. All the way right. Robbie Burlew's on it. Going again. Very tall figure for central midfield. He's six foot three. And the referee says, play on, get up. How about this move? And a chance early on. Excellent save. But Maloon Gumbale showing that skill on the ball. A nice little touch to get around his defender and nearly had a shot on goal. Gumbale showed a tremendous amount of speed there. So now Kalamazoo back line, the three at the back know what they're up against. But the goalkeeper did really, really well. Morse coming off his line from previous games that I've watched of him. He's, he's so quick off the, he's super sharp off the line. He's good in the air and he's a great shot stopper as well. Matt Lockwood with an important clearance. He went down, took a foul as he cleared it. And the referee will now allow for advantage to come back. Aaron Valley, the center referee this evening. Ethan Dixon, Noah Brenny are his assistants and Kevin Stapleford, the fourth official. Kalamazoo with a free kick. They're from Kalamazoo, Michigan, of course, home of Western Michigan University. About 75,000 people there in the southern Michigan city. And King's Hammer back on the ball. Headed from Reinhardt towards Tony Pineda, but it doesn't find its target. Federico Russo was there first. Adrian Lara with it from Shorewood, Illinois, outside Chicago. This one cleared away by Morse, but it's going to find King's Hammer instantly. Gumbale with it. In the center of the park, he'll move it out left. Paul Hernandez, and this will be sent all the way back to Lalas Ayerti. On the ball now, Taylor Dyson. It's moved over to Carson Kendall. Carson Kendall has three senior international caps by the U.S. Virgin Islands national team from Charlotte Amelie on that U.S. territory island. Also plays with the High Point Panthers, one of a couple High Point players here. And on the back line, this is ART again. King Sammer there from Covington, Kentucky, just outside of Cincinnati, the Queen City in Ohio. Right side, Gumbale. And he'll try to whip one in. Reinhardt was the target, I believe, that time. But it's whipped back out. Hernandez from the left side. That went too far for anybody in black, and it's out for a goal kick. The black jerseys ought to be making them a little bit warmer on the pitch today. It's about 90 degrees here in Des Moines. Pretty unseasonable weather for this far north, but at the same time, both these teams will be used to it. It's been a warm summer, hasn't it? It most certainly has, Danny. Um, but just looking at King's Hammer right now and just how they shaped up, and th they seem pretty comfortable. It's been a good, good start for them, uh, to be honest with you. The outside backs and Robbie Burlew, and Hernandez like to get forward, but what I've noticed on the far side, when the six gets the ball, so Dyson comes in. Robbie Burlew, Burlew obviously, he either makes a wide run or an inside run just in between the lines, which is, is causing some problems. Just in the beginning that I've noticed, I've noticed a few heads turn in the midfield from Kalamazoo, just wondering like who's picking him up and who's tracking. Yeah, it's been difficult going for them early on on the back line. They'll have plenty of work to do through all 90 minutes. Mikel Goling giving away a free kick in midfield, by the way. Lada gets it back underway. And that found Matt Whelan, or Pepe Martinez was the one there, and collided with Bryant Pratt, the goalkeeper for King Sammer. In the end, I think the referee says, we'll just play on. Would have been a foul against Martinez, the Spanish striker. But instead, Bryant Pratt allowed to just roll this one back into play, and King Sammer on the ball down the right side. Robbie Berlu. He'll find Gumbale. Gumbale moves back towards his own half. Burlew's got it again. Burlew, a product of this uh, King's Hammer system. He grew up in Cincinnati, went to Finneytown High School there. Also plays for Northern Kentucky in the area. They play in Highland Heights, just about 30 minutes south of town. And Bryant Pratt on the ball again. Kendall. He'll play it to Taylor Dyson. Dyson moves it out left. Hernandez couldn't get there first. Matt Lockwood had it, but gives it away just as quickly. And now ART on it again. From Accra, Ghana, he'll send it long. And that one is dealt with well by Ethan. On the ball, Adrian Lara for Corona. Corona nearly gave the ball away to Taylor Reinhardt. Kalamazoo fortunate not to give up a goal scoring chance there, but now they'll send it long. Intended target, I believe, was Pepe Martinez, but he was offside and let it go. AOT will send it into midfield. Aiden April 
Another long ball, and again, just moments away from linking up with Taylor Reinhardt or Tony Panetta up top. Those two guys on those kind of diagonal balls from the right side seem to be the target. It was rather casual there from Paul Fang, but he's confident in his goalkeeper, Hunter Morse. Obviously, they've played together throughout the season. Ball going over the top, he probably got the shout. We couldn't hear it from here. Excellent ball in on the throw, and could it lead to an attacking chance for Kalamazoo? Patient possession. On this left side, a chance to cross in. Maybe he'll go alone. Excellent tackle that time by the captain, Kendall. But given away and a shot at the top of the box is saved well by Bryant Pratt. Diving to his left, and it was a save that needed to be made. Well, firstly, it was a fantastic tackle there by Kendall. And then the save by Bryant Pratt. Unbelievable to his left-hand side. And this is, this is already Kalamazoo setting the mark. Basically, this is how we're going to play. So just keep you on your toes. We're in for an exciting game here. Already you see this kind of chess match between both sides, and I don't think we're going to see either team kind of play it safe at any point. Both teams are going for goals early on. Both teams know that this first punch in this, you know, proverbial boxing match, it's an important one. Yes, it is. You know, playoffs. It's playoffs now, so win or lose at the end of the day. There's a few n nervous. You can tell the butterflies are out there. There was no pressure on the initial shot earlier but I tell you what that's nerves out of Brian Pr Brian Pratt it's confidence he's in the game now certainly is Gumbale will throw it in and this will be Aiden Abril on the ball sent long by Gumbale winning the ball back and receiving a foul for his troubles Mikkel Goling from Copenhagen Denmark plays for the Young Harris Mountain Lions at the uh, Division II level that's up in the North Georgia Mountains beautiful area about an hour from where I grew up and on the back line, Robbie Berlew gives to Carson Kendall. Kendall will hold, and not a whole lot of pressure convincing him to do otherwise. Ayert, he nearly gave the ball away, and Kendall has it again. We'll move it out right, Berlew. He's seen a lot of the ball early on. He's part of this kind of building out from the back. He will give it away this time. Kalamazoo can come the other way. Cooklin gives it out wide. Russo. Russo for Lockwood. That one's intercepted. Nice diving play by Reinhardt to keep it in. And through midfield, it was a great run by Gumbale. Now he's got it out wide. Could he cross it in from here? He'll have a go at goal, and it's not far away from top bins. It'll be a goal kick in the end. Well, again, he's, he's showing his deceptive pace on the far side there, breaking into the box. Technique was off. He was leaning back when he struck that ball. As you can see there, it was a lovely ball played in first by Goling. And as you can see, just blazes the ball over the bar. You see the build-up play. You see what they want to do. It's just a couple of quick passes in midfield, and they're off to the races. Some speedy outside wingers especially. Gumbele is going to be a player to watch in this match. You know, as long as he can keep his energy levels up, uh, he's going to be a problem for Kalamazoo. And if they can find him in behind, especially on that right-hand side against Adrian Lara. Corona plays it in, and this is going to find the run of Wheeling. Can he cross it in? No, it's out for a corner kick, though. And I think we will see it go to Tom Cooklin-Levy. And this is where we spoke about earlier on, Danny, with the set pieces. I can, number 29, Paul Fang, has gone forward again on the far post, looking at his matchup here. It looks all right with Goling. But he likes to get inside the defender. I see they zone all in the box, King's Hammer, so this could be interesting. Cooklin Levy's cross. Back post. It is towards Efong, but won that time by Mikkel Goling. Kalamazoo will try again and build out of the back, it would seem. Matt Lockwood's got it, and he can outlet it out. Tadera O'Rourdon. O'Rourdon sends it long, and that one's well dealt with by Burlew. Gumbale back to Berlu, and we'll see if he goes long this time. He won't. He'll see it one more time. And now he will play that outlet ball long. Battle for the ball, and it's won by Kalamazoo. Good play backwards by O'Rourdon. And now moving forward, this is Chase Strine. He'll send it long. And a little attempt at a dinked ball over the top didn't quite beat the back line of Kingshammer. And Reinhardt was trying to get on the end of that with his head. That seems like something that 
King Samuel have wanted to do early on too is get it to the head of Reinhardt so we can outlet it with a headed pass. Well, I tell you what, the, the matchup with Reinhardt and, and Ifang at the back there for Kalamazoo, it's going to be challenging. What, what Kings Hammer need to do is try and get the ball into the wide areas and try and find the space in behind Lara and Russo because that is, I think, where they're going to affect the game against Kalamazoo. High pressure from Kalamazoo, wins the ball back inside the box. Now it's Lockwood. Nearly goes down under some pressure, plays it across a tantalizing ball, and no one was there. Aiden Abril's got it now for King's Hammer. And boy, that was an excellent cross. Nice job by Lockwood on that right side. Not to go down in the box and to keep that play alive, just unfortunate he didn't have a teammate with him. Well, it, it was also good defending as well because the defender didn't bring him down. Hernandez just pulled out of that, making sure that Lockwood didn't go down and the cross just eluded Martinez, nobody else coming in on the far post. Dyson outlets it to Abril, and Abril gives it away. Chance for Corona to come the other way, plays Whelan. And Strine will play it back to the back line. Here's Paul F. On. Sees it again. Strine. Just doesn't like what he sees ahead of him, and instead he'll play Adrian Lara. The switch to Federico Russo, who's got Venezuelan and Italian heritage. She's born in Caracas, in the South a American country, I should say. Kumbale. Look to take his player on, but instead he'll play it back. Sent forward in a slip that time. From Taylor Reinhardt means the opportunity's gone. And sent all the way back this time. That could be an error. Excellent work by Bryant Pratt to be aware and get there first. But those are the little moments that could change things in the course of this match are just those, those back passes that don't quite work or the errors in possession. It could be something that small that decides this match. Long ball for Pepe Martinez this time. He'll latch onto it, but he'll have to turn it around. Whelan moves it out right. Lockwood, central ball, and he wanted a ball back, but Cooklin had some work to do just to hold on to the ball. They'll play it in, deflected, and dealt with by ART, but back into the area with Lockwood. Lockwood beats a couple of defenders, another cross in. This time, it's out for a corner kick. ART hasn't cleared his lines on two occasions. They should have done better with that clearance. Just going to the edge of the box to Lockwood, and the, obviously the corner was one there. Another set piece for Paul Fang to go forward forward and try and score this one. He's dangerous, he's dangerous in the air. But I tell you what, the, the midfield areas right now, Kings Hammers are picking up the spare ball. They're picking up the clearances from the back line of Kalamazoo. And, and they've got the right overloads there because Matt Whelan's pressed up higher and so is Tom Cooklin just leaving Shrine and Aroyden. Aroyden to take the corner, it comes in. Efong is the target and he can't put it on target. But a good opportunity, and that looked like something right off the training ground. Yes, it did. And, and all it takes is just a, a little little nudge there from Goling. I mean, that's all it takes just to put him off. It was, it was redirected wide. So good defending there by Goling. This is Robbie Burlew. And Burlew will think about advancing it forward. He'll play it in between a couple of midfielders. Goling gives it back to him. And now here's Abril. Aiden Abril from Wine, Maryland. His brother Alex also played soccer at High Point where he's currently a Panther. And moved across to Carson Kendall. That's Taylor Dyson on the back line for the moment. Looks like they've switched personnel a little bit and gone to more of a three back formation. And this was something the head coach mentioned that they could do. Yes, he did, and, and Berlu, Berlu came into the midfield. As you can see, he's on the ball now. So he stepped into the midfield, and all that happens is Tyler Dyson goes into the back line. This way they can push Berlu into the midfield. Again, overloads, and here, as you can see, just stretch the midfield there of Kalamazoo. Berlu running forward. He'll play across in. It's deflected, and that will yield a corner kick. Nobody 
running to take it particularly quickly. Just a chance to catch your breath a little bit in the heat. 16th minute, no score between Kings Hammer and Kalamazoo FC. A chance for Kings Hammer to put something in the box now. Very interesting there. I, th I think from what I'm seeing here, Kings Hammer have changed the shape a bit. It could be a back three, but they will rotate that system all the time. And I think that's just what confused Kalamazoo at that particular point. It's a short cross in. Pineda lays it in, and that one's well defended at the near post. Kings Hammer were thinking about recycling that ball, and they nearly gave it away to the run of Whelan. Bryant Pratt's got it instead, and he'll send this one across midfield. This is Aiden Abro. Center of the park, Berlu. Puts his head down, and he'll run outside. Nice spin move that time by Goling. Played in by Pineda, I believe, on that occasion, and it was well wide. That was a good, uh, good spell there by Kings Hammer. Just as you can see with this, the shape change through momentum of play, just the passage of play there. Pineda just a little bit wayward with his shot off balance, but I can tell you something. It is steaming hot down there. We're feeling it up here as well. <laughs> we certainly are. As this one is sent long by Kalamazoo. Midfield battle is won by the boys in sky blue. They'll give it away though. Goling has it. And on the right side, uh, we're back to a back four, aren't we? Carson Kendall's got it. And Lala Sayerti on the left side of this back line. Bull Hernandez. Sayerti again. Playing his 10th match this season. He's got three yellow cards on the year. Not afraid to get into a tackle. It's his second season with King's Hammer. Berlu advances to Gumbale. Trying to run in behind was Reinhardt. And that won't yield anything. It'll be a throw in after some nice defensive work from Adrian Lara. Yeah, you can see the ob overloads on the opposite side. Like just a little bit earlier on there before the, before the throw in. The diagonal ball was played and broke the press. And you had Goling just spare in the, in, in the space there with an overload of 2v1 there with Robbie Burlu. But Burlu comes in as well so that he's inverted. This is causing problems for Kalamazoo. Now Kings Hammer doing a good job of keeping pressure on in this half of the pitch. And they will win the ball back for that exact reason. Taylor Dyson plays it to Burlu. And given away that time, the intended target was Goling in midfield. Kalamazoo can come the other way. This will be O'Rourden and sent long for a player who was not on side to receive it. That'll be a throw in for King Sammer. Something about Kalamazoo, this is a club that has a whole lot of respect for King Sammer. We were speaking about the potential for them to get revenge over Menace if both teams advance to the second round because Menace was the team that beat Kalamazoo and knocked them out in the Central Conference playoffs last season. Uh, but they were very intense. Uh, all three players uh, and coaching staff that I talked to about the fact that they are not overthinking this Kings Hammer match right here. They have a lot of respect for this team, and I think we've seen in the first 20 minutes why that is. A lot of talent in this Kings Hammer side. Yes, definitely. Not just that, they're well organized. The coaching staff have got them on par here tactically. As you can see, the first coming up to the first 20 minutes of the match, I think Cal Kalamazoo are just a little bit all over the place, to be honest with you, just off the ball with the shape. And, and, and the mo it's the movement of especially the outside backs with Hernandez and Berlu either tucking in one wide, the other one tucking in on the opposites, and, and it's causing problems because that's the overload. And then what's got to happen, Kalamazoo, Whelan and, and Cooklin have got to drop into that space to pick up because of the overloads. Pressure with numbers again, and it'll work out for King Samuel. They'll win this ball back in the attacking third. Here's Gumbale. Tried to beat three players on the dribble and wasn't far away from doing so, but in the end, Kalamazoo's back line holds firm. Whelan, he's got space to advance forward. He likes the ball at his feet, especially for a target man. He's still going. Challenge on the shoulder. He'll cut it back. Lockwood has a go with his right foot. And Martinez tried to stick a boot in, but nothing doing. Excellent save once again from Bryant Pratt. I, I think Kings Hammer have had the edge in run of play, but Kalamazoo might have had the two best chances in goal so far. 
Yeah, Kings Hammer, they mustn't get too over eager. They're committing too, too many players forward. And again there, I think Dyson was caught 1v1 when Cooklin got the ball and broke forward. And it caused problems. In fact, it was Mikel Goling who was tracking back. And then obviously Lockwood with the inverted run to support in the back heel. Keeper did really well, Brian Pratt, just to save it with Martinez lurking just there for the rebound. Paul Effa across midfield with this ball and Ayerty is the man who gets there first for King's Hammer. Ayerty again. He'll play Paul Hernandez. We'll move out to that left wing where he does like to get forward, doesn't he? This one played forward by Taylor Dyson. And on the right side, it's Burlu. Looking infield at the moment. Doesn't see any open passing lanes, and instead he'll play his captain, Carson Kendall. Pratt on the ball with two big saves already in the first half of this first half. ART. You see the space that he wants somebody to run into, and nobody's doing his bidding at the moment. This one's sent long by Pineda. And Gumbale gets on the end of it, but he's not quite quick enough to latch onto that ball. And there aren't a whole lot of long balls that you can say that about. He's got so much pace, he doesn't quite get to that one. Yeah, and good defending there by Corona. Corona was very, very deep. And to get that ball in space for, for Aetu is going to be really, really difficult. Actually, Gumbale is going to be really, really difficult. So it's good cover there from Corona. But here's what I noticed earlier. Because Kings Hammer is switching it from left to right really, really quickly into Balu. Balu's playing a higher line. He gets up wide, and they're looking to switch it. Either they've got to figure it out in the midfield, Kalamazoo, and who's going to do that role of pressing out wide at the right back, Balu, and then ultimately putting a press on the player on the ball here to eliminate that ball, the diagonal ball. Kings Hammer back in possession where they have been for the majority of the first half. ART. <coughs> he'll run into some space. And again, he's looking for that ball kind of straight forward. Instead, he'll play it out wide where there's more space for Hernandez. ART again. He's more than comfortable just holding out of this ball, waiting for the pass that he wants. Burlu checks into midfield, and now he'll see possession. Gets across midfield. And he'll play it out right. Gumbale stretching the play back to Burlu. Kumbali again, please slow down. But Kumbali will take on his man, trying to get around Corona that time. Can't do it. Excellent work by Adrian <coughs> Corona. And that was O'Rourden trying to move forward, breaking out of midfield for Kalamazoo. Couldn't do that. And King's Hammer have it back. That's Dyson, and he'll move it out wide. Did Dyson get it off a Kalamazoo player? I think he did in the end. And now it's Abro. Forward for Burlu. Dyson again. Burlu touches it down. Right side of the box. Well dispossessed that time. And cleared away. That time they'll get Carson Kendall. Or I think just holding on to Matt Whelan a little bit. Not allowing him to run past him. Yeah, just a little nudge into Whelan as the ball's played over the top. As you can see here, as the ball's played in by Corona, a little nudge into the back. But if Kendall dropped off two yards, Whelan was either going to flick it on and Kendall would have just brought that ball down and be able to play out with no problem at all. Here's what I have noticed as well. In the midfield for Kings Hammer, I think that at Abro and Taylor Dyson are doing a great job as far as the rotating. Dyson just sits in when the rest of the midfield goes forward and the ball's played. He just protects the two center backs. It screens the ball, he picks it up. But as soon as he's receiving it, guess who's alongside him on the left or the right as Abril just s comes in there to help him in possession. Free kick on the back line for Kalamazoo. They've got everybody forward for this. And it appears to be Lada to take it. Sends it long, headed into the area. No blue shirts really available. 
And Hernandez has it. He'll clear it away for King Samer. Beats the first defender. Efong is there to clean it up. O'Rourdan. Play it in the midfield. That's Russo. Gave it away for a moment, but just picked up by, I think that was Chase Strine in the end. Sent long by Lara. And it'll be a King Samer throw. Kalamazoo have shown the effort and the intention to get the ball long, but struggling to get players on the end of those long balls. Yeah, it, it, it's just misplaced passes, misplayed through balls. There's just a communication connection, whether it's verbal or nonverbal, it's not quite connecting. It's going to take take some time to get into it they've just been pushed off the game a bit here and you can see but King, credit to King's Hammer I mean they're playing well right now and you know anything can happen against the run of players we've seen in transition earlier where Kalamazoo broke through on the ball now Gumbale and he can't hold on throw in for Kalamazoo short throw in and Undergoing a foul that time. So another Kalamazoo free kick. Last time they had, I mean, five or six players all at the edge of the box looking to get forward. It's a little bit closer in this time. Did they go with the same tactic or maybe play it short? I think they're going to go along, especially, you know, with the big fella going, Paul Lefang. I mean, you want to get that ball into the penalty area where he's going to be effective. You watch Martinez off the ball as well because this this ball is bound to go far post, to be honest with you, with Martinez will spin out looking for the ball across the box. We shall see if it finds its way on an in-swinger to the back post. It's a prediction of Justin Vorster. In goes the ball. More central in the end, and I don't think that was the intention. It's easily claimed by Bryant Pratt. And that could just be a deterrent. Everyone thinks it's going into Effing at the back. I would have, I would have really overhit that into the far post. But again, something different always helps. It just deviates from what the obvious might be. Lada with it for Kalamazoo. He will usher that one out, and it'll be a throw-in for the boys from Michigan. Kalamazoo started playing 2015. Spent a couple of years in NPSL before they moved to USL League Two. They've been there since 2017. They've become a mainstay in this Central Conference, wherever division they've been placed in. They've been competitive, and I mean, it's always one of those clubs you just kind of circle on the calendar and say, this is one of those teams we know we have to bring our best against. Yeah, and they, they make the playoffs every year. I mean, they're always in there. They've got a really, really tough, and it was tough for them this year, you know, in the, in the, in the division they were in. And it... With this, with the, the division, all the divisions here in the Midwest, it's getting so much stronger every year. The teams are getting better. The quality, there's USL two are doing a fantastic job with, you know, the introduction of new organizations and that. It just makes this league more and more competitive. Well, it'll be a chance for Taylor Dyson. About 20 yards or so away from goal to just whip in more or less across. He'll play it to the near post, head it away quickly. Can Kingshammer mount another attack? No, they'll give it away, and now a two-on-one opportunity for Kalamazoo to counter and go the other way. This is Lockwood, could go alone, he will! And an incredible save, parried out, and a an golden opportunity at goal is saved by Bryant Pratt for the third occasion in this first half. Well, when you look at this again, yeah, Really good defending from Ayotu. Ayotu didn't commit himself in that 2v1 until Lockwood made a decision taking that ball with his touch just slightly wide. Bryant had it covered. I think Ayotu did a really good job. There was fantastic defending. So another corner kick to come. There you see Matt Lockwood who did a great job getting the ball forward, taking advantage of the counter chance. Just couldn't quite beat the keeper with his effort at goal. In comes the cross. Headed away back post by Pineda. Sent back in, and that one is curled away from goal. Well, that ball was uh, aimed into the far post there, Danny. It was aimed into the far post, again for a fang. But again, how they've zoned up King, uh, King's Hammer on the six-yard box doesn't allow that space there for a fang to come in. Well, a drinks break, as you can see on your screen. 
just past the 30 minute mark and if this wasn't a day to pull the hydration break out I don't know what one would be it's uh, fully understandable that Aaron Valley and his officiating crew would call for it and still nil nil of course between these two sides I think it's easy to say that Kalamazoo have maybe had one or two better chances in front of goal but King Sammer have dominated the run of play more or less yes they definitely have and you talk about a water break I mean I uh, I think we deserve a water break up here because of all the hard work we've been doing at the <laughs> moment. No, just joking on there. But y to your point, you know, it, it is extremely hot down there on that turf. Kings Hammer are definitely the better team so far. I think if Kalamazoo can figure something out going into the half, obviously with 14 minutes to go, they might have to change their shape even to, to match up. I think Kings Hammer have done a good job with not just the matchups, but just the overloads in wide areas. And I think those are the areas where they're going to expose Kalamazoo. But, you know, Adrian Corona and M Matt Lockwood, I mean, they've been do doing a good job dropping into a back five just to eliminate the space in behind them. So as the game progresses, we'll see. If players get tired. We might have a couple of changes. That's not often you see outside players anymore in proper midfield roles, right? Usually you'll see a wing back who's more defensive or, or maybe a winger who gets forward more often. But... Corona and Lockwood, to your point, for Kalamazoo, have really been central for the most part. They get back when they need to. They get forward at times where we saw Lockwood take that you know, counter chance. And I think they're, they're proper midfielders in an era where we don't see wingers play both sides super often. Yeah, and just looking at tendencies, you know, Matt Lockwood likes to get forward, you c as we've seen. Corona likes to stay just a little bit deeper in cover, which obviously those – those are the instructions or the, the coaching staff are working with the personnel and I think that's that says a lot yeah it certainly does you mentioned the uh, water break for us I think it really needs a, a water break and deserves one is the CISN crew want to thank them for all that they do fantastic people up here in the booth making these broadcasts possible but just about ready to get back underway before we do that I want to give you an update of uh, a match across the central division in uh, Flint Michigan where Chicago FC United are hosting Peoria City, who we know as deep north division opponents of Des Moines Menace. Chicago are up 2-0 in that match, and not only that, Peoria City are down to nine men after multiple red cards. So that puts Chicago in pretty good position with about 15 minutes left to move through and play the winner of Flint City and South Bend. That's on the other side. Couldn't play any of those teams, neither of these teams could, until the Central Conference Final next week. With that back underway, 34th minute now, and you imagine there will be a couple minutes at least of added time with the hydration break included. Kalamazoo with a chance to maybe possess, and like you mentioned, it may be a chance you don't get this in every match, the hydration break, the chance to strategically change some pieces around. What do you think, if anything, Kalamazoo will switch? Well, it's interesting because you've got to get the message across to just certain individuals as you see Corona breaking forward there with a lovely pass down the left-hand side. In the end, fantastic defending on the back line. That's Robbie Burlew, the right back. Kendall will head it away, still not out of danger. Nice touch down. And that one's given away. Lockwood is trying to get on it. And now it's Chase Strine for Kalamazoo. O'Rourdon. Out left for Lada. Lada gets past Goling, lowers the shoulder, and just keeps moving, blows by him. A good ball in, and I think a couple of players were in the area and weren't on the same wavelength as far as who was going to pick it up. I think Whelan was the closest to it. I was trying to let it go for Tom Cooklin that time, but he wasn't making the run either. No, and when look, when Lara broke through, Gumbe Gum Gumbele and Goling just stood there and let him go. I'm surprised no one went with him. I think there was just a, a communication piece as, as to who was going to press. And then, you know, in those situations, I think, Laura got his head up and he's like, how much space do I have in front of me? And nobody really showed for a combination. And it just goes to show it's, it's hot out there. It's, it's affecting the players. Yeah, it certainly affects those little things like communication. Going down in the meantime, there's a Kalamazoo player that will set up a free kick. Robbie Burlew brought him down. That's good work by Corona, just the work rate to win the ball back. And this long ball from Lada. Yep, that will be a foul pretty much every time. I think it goes against Burley that time. No, it'll be Carson Kendall in the end. He's playing his 10th match this season. Six foot three. 
Spent the 2019 summer with NC Fusion U23. Made two appearances for them. And the ball comes in on the set piece. Headed to the top of the box, but referee says no. There was a foul in the buildup. Yeah, Paul A. Fang was holding the shirt off Goling. But you can see how they've doubled up on a Fang. The Kings have done their homework, most definitely. They know what he's about. They're not give, giving him space on set pieces. They're defending really well, and credit, credit to Kings Hammer. I think they've done, so far, on set defending set pieces, they've done a fantastic job. Another ball forward for Kalamazoo that could be promising. This is Cooklin. Cooklin sends it long. There's a player there. It's Whelan. He touches it down, but excellent defending. When it mattered most, Burlu gets there, and it's another Kalamazoo corner kick. Well, Burlu was just caught out of position when that ball was played, and as you can see here, Martinez into Lockwood. Lockwood, uh, Cooklin with a lovely ball through, but the touch at the end of the day there from Tom, Tom Cooklin just wasn't quite there and gave enough time for Burlu to get across. Yeah, that first touch from Matt Whelan, who was on the end of that cross, was just not quite enough, as you mentioned. So a cross to be sent in on this corner kick. One of the few chances from out here. And it comes very close to the goal and headed away at the first time of asking. Cooklin wants to put another one in. Beats Goling, does play it in, and players there, another chance. No one can put it in the back of the net. And that was a golden chance once again on another fantastic cross. They're doing a great job playing it in when they have it in the wide spaces. But just that finishing edge is not there. Yeah, as you can see, what a gr great ball in there by Tom Cooklin. Eludes everybody. A little flick on it. There's enough blue shirts there on the far post. As Matt Whelan just under pressure there from Carson Kendall. Balloons it over the bar. And Kendall just had uh, signs of cramp there. Good defending on the far post. But look at but look at this playing out of the back. You know, Ayeti just wants the ball at feet, and they're just pretty calm. And, it, and there's no press, obviously, because of the heat. They're just holding off. Hernandez tried to play it forward for Reinhardt, who did a good job holding up the play a moment ago. Now he nearly wins the ball back on pressure. Instead, it'll be a chance for King Sammer to build from their own half. Misplaced pass, and Lockwood goes the other way. Still Lockwood. Bowls over Hernandez, but referee says play on. Lockwood will play it in. Good first touch by Hernandez. Or sorry, that's Martinez. And that one was not the cleanest shot at goal. So Pratt is comfortable and picks it up. AO2 was too close there as well. Kendall was just in behind him covering. The touch was the touch was okay, just a little bit too much there by Martinez. But AO2 did enough there just to pick it up. Kendall moves it out right. Burlu. Lofted ball from Burlu is met by the head of Adrian Lara. And this one is sent in from the left. Nothing doing. Kendall. Back line, Pratt. Pratt sends it forward all the way to the midfield line. And it's one back by Kalamazoo for now. Corona plays it back to Lara. Across the face of goal, Federico Russo with it. Chase Strine. Strine moves it out left. Excellent idea, Whelan got up to it with his head, but offside is the decision in the end. And that will yield a free kick. Well, there's a lot of space here on our near side here for Matt Lockwood to use, utilize Hernandez is playing just about six to eight yards off him because he knows what he's about. If he gets the ball at feet, he'll run at him. But then what they need to do possibly here, Kalamazoo, is utilize the space in between Hernandez and Ayetu. And maybe Martinez is, is breaking into that space. Martinez likes the ball at feet. So may, he's got, they've got to look at someone breaking into that space there because there is a lot of space that's been given there by Hernandez, who's trying to deal with Matt Lockwood at the moment. Hernandez has it now. He'll play it to Aiden April. Ball given away. Might have touched a hand. Referee will say nothing there. Burlu. Forward for Gumbale. Gumbale plays it back, and April will try and run forward. He'll switch course now. Played across the pitch to Hernandez. Hernandez running at Lockwood. He beats him. 
Thought about the ball out left. Instead, he'll hold on to it and give it away. Too much pressure from Kalamazoo. Now they could spring their own counterattack. Arorden, long for Whelan. Plays it to his chest. Whelan can go one-on-one, -on -one, trying to beat Kendall. Excellent ball in. Surely a shot on goal. Still nothing. Excellent pressure by Pratt, but still in the area. Could Kalamazoo get something away? That one's blocked and cleared away by Abril. Incredible defending on the back line. King's Hammer will just not give up a goal. Here they come the other way. This is Tony Pineda. Pineda from Statesville, North Carolina, outside Charlotte, and he'll calm things down a bit for King's Hammer. Good decision to just let them build out and, and have a little bit of defensive relief from the pressure. This wall is good through for Gumbale. But a good sliding challenge wins the ball back. Cooklin sends it forward. Pepe Martinez. Martinez tried to beat ART, but didn't quite have the pace. And it's back to Pratt. Good defending there from ART. There's been a battle between Martinez and ART, that's for sure. But going back to that one moment earlier on in the transition there for Kalamazoo, Hernandez was very, very indecisive when he was going forward, when he had the run to his left-hand side there from Goling, and he, he could have played it. I think it was actually P Tony Pineda. He should have played it earlier indecisive broken down lost possession as you see that free kick but lost lost possession we have a yellow card but then that transitional moment and i think that's what caused problems but luckily for king's hammer they managed to clear that as you mentioned justin we'll see a royal mile replay of this yellow card and it'll go to com tom cooklin levy he receives the first booking of this match and that's for kalamazoo it's a Royal Mile replay. Royal Mile, the best place in Des Moines to catch a soccer match. So a free kick for King's Hammer. Again, it's just relief of pressure because the more that they can feel comfortable on the ball in their own end, in moments like this, when they're not being pressed, they can get forward and do what they want to do playing through midfield. They will give it away this time. Cooklin. Back for Corona. Corona for Whelan, who's moved out left for the moment. Lada to Chase Strine. Arorden back for Strine. Strine picked his head up and played it forward. Corona back to Lada. Arorden, four goals, two assists on the year. He's also a youth soccer coach in Michigan. Played for the Davenport Panthers for his college ball after growing up in Cork, Ireland. This is Lada. Advanced ball and offside in the end is the ruling by uh, more than a couple player lengths that time. But why not go and run at it if you've got that one-on-one -on -one with the keeper? Might as well make the referee put the flag up. AO2 saw Martinez just drifting into that space. They're calling for the ball. It was held on by Lara way too long. They just held their line. The ball was played over. Again, it's, it's just the connection, the runs. Um, Kalamazoo just, you know, with a few minutes to go, hopefully they can just with their coaching staff sorted out, coming out into the second half. Just about a minute and a half of regular time in the first half to play, and you imagine there will be about three or so minutes of added time. Kirkland, he'll be on the move. Whelan plays it forward for Kirkland again. British Isles connection. Whelan's got it, the Irishman. He'll have a long shot, and that one is saved by Bryant Pratt, but you saw the power on that one. You knew what he was going to do, a slap shot but Pratt was equal to the task. Well, that combination there with Cooklin or Oriadon, I mean, that was a lot better, as you can see here. Just wheeling, just playing the ball into his path. Great strike there, but it was an easy one. Well tamed there by Brian Pratt, wearing his yellow jersey, number 99. Cooklin again, he'll play. Pepe Martinez, he'll have a go outside the box. That one's blocked, he'll grab onto it again. Whelan. Kirkland a shot, and it's just over the bar. It was Dara O'Rourdon in the end who advanced into attacking midfield and had a go. Not a bad effort. Wanted to just curl it in to this top right post. You see a Royal Mile replay here. You can see that first initial shot was blocked. It was a nice little layoff there into the path of O'Rourdon by Matt, uh, Matt Whelan. But now it's a, a much better passage of play. Kings Hammer have had their passes broken up with you know, just intercepting passes as, as the positioning's good and also fatigue legs. And, and this is when you do, both teams just, if they want to go into the half, zero, zero, they just need to be careful, can't be complacent, go in, regroup, 
But you know, it has, it, it's been an interesting first half, that's for sure. And we imagined it would be, looking at these two sides on paper. And it is three minutes of added time that we'll see to the end of half number one. Kumbala is fouled by Kalamazoo, and that'll be a free kick for King Sammer going the other direction. And you see King Sammer trying to take a little bit of air out of the ball, especially since that hydration break. They've been trying to find their way and just kind of keep Kalamazoo from building momentum. We do want to let you know that Peoria City has gotten one back against the run of play and down two men. It's 2-1. So with about 10 minutes left in that one, Peoria back in it. Meanwhile, King's Hammer looking to go 1-0 up. That shot's blocked. Some excellent dribbling, though. Out to the left, Pineda. Pineda was working. He'll play to Hernandez, and that is skied well over the box, and that is going to land on the roof of the glass room at Valley Stadium. Nowhere near where he wanted it to go. Yeah, when you, when you look at this, it's just a, a big touch there, but you see here Pineda laying it off here, and it's blasted over the ball. Over the bar there, you know, by Hernandez. The, the actual left back, and like I mentioned, how they push forward. But the initial pass passage of play there, I mean, it was Reinhardt had his second, third touch was way too big. He should have maybe just laid it off. You know, Mikael Goling was calling for it. He had two yards of space. And if you're wondering whether the uh, roof was an analogy or a uh kind of an expression it's not it's quite literally on top of the roof at the moment that was a a very high ball nowhere near the goal of course Paul Hernandez the left back five foot seven 145 but what he lacks in size he makes up for in skill and experience played with CF Girona the U19s there in Spain also spent a season with Florida Elite in USL League Two in 2019 and another chance for King's Hammer another shot blocked and this one will be corralled into the welcoming arms of Hunter Morse well, Morse just parries that ball down to the ground, just takes it into his stomach, lays down for a bit, just killing a bit of time. And I think, you know, they want, both teams want to take this game into half at 0-0. But, you know, Pineda with a lovely little turn there onto his right foot. But there was just enough blue shirts around him to deflect that ball and just take the power off it. Final few seconds ticking away in half number one. It's up to the whistle of Aaron Valley as to win exactly. We'll go into the halftime team talks, but both teams sensing it's coming and I think both teams content with that given the weather and the circumstances and the run of play. Makes it seem like nil-nil's fair at the moment. There it is. Half number one is over and no goals to show for it yet. 45 minutes gone and Kalamazoo FC and King's Hammer FC level at nil-nil. We'll take a quick break here on CISN and be back in a moment. Justin Forrester and myself, Danny Katula, with halftime analysis. So don't go away. You're on the home of the USL League Two National Playoffs in the Central Conference. It's CISN. Joints are keeping you from what you really want to do. Whether it's playing with your kids, golfing on the weekends, or dancing with your spouse on date night, DMOS can help. Des Moines Orthopedic Surgeons. DMOS, a nationally recognized team of orthopedic specialists, can help make it happen. Rated among the state's best for joint replacement surgery, DMOS offers the Metro's most comprehensive range of play restoring orthopedic services, from sports medicine, urgent injury, to physical therapy. At DMOS, we're ready to help you get back to living. Learn more at DMOS.com. Hi, it's Amanda with Holt Plumbing and Heating. With inventory tight, Holt not only anticipated the need, but took the risk of stocking up on our most popular products. While our competitors scramble to find furnaces, air conditioners, and water heaters, we have plenty of stock ready to be installed. Even though we have extra products, now we see demand at an all-time high. To sweeten the deal, we are also offering 0% financing on your new purchase. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. At DeArmond Ford Indianola and DeArmond Automotive Knoxville, we want you to experience the DeArmond difference. My dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure your ownership experience is exceptional. We're completing phase two of our major reconstruction project at our Indianola location, providing a state-of-the-art customer lounge and waiting area and soon-to-be all-new showroom, reinvesting back into our communities. DeArmond Ford Indianola and DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Experience the DeArmond difference today. DeArmondAuto.com. It takes a village to empower a young person to achieve their full potential. 
Yet today in America, one in three kids are growing up without a mentor. Together, we can change this. You can be that someone for a young person by becoming a mentor. Join the village, big brothers, big sisters. Become a big today. Halftime between four seed Kalamazoo FC and five seed Kings Hammer FC. Nothing to separate the two sides on the scoreboard and two different approaches to this match. But I think in the end, not a lot to separate these two in the run of play either. Kalamazoo took a while to get into this one and really calm the nerves down. But I think they've done so in that last 15 minutes, that quarter hour after the water break was really a good one for them, Justin. Justin Forster joining myself, Danny Catula for live coverage here on CISN. Justin, thoughts on that first half, and in the end, if we're gonna scorecard this, who had that first half in your mind? It could have gone King's Hammer's way in the first 20, 25 minutes. Kalamazoo could have scored two goals in the last 15, 18 minutes, to be honest with you. They had a couple of chances. It was well defended. There was the one particular moment where AA2 did really, really well in a 2v1, delayed his, his movements, dropped, angles were right, just uh, forcing Lockwood wide a and uh, you know it takes moments like that you know in games and it, that particular moment is critical yeah it is and it's going to come down to that critical moment who is going to make that play that changes the match or potentially who's going to make that mistake that changes the match I it's what all of these playoffs are about but especially in such an evenly matched game between these two sides that's what it could come down to it could also come down to what these coaches decide to do tactically in the second half. What tweaks are you expecting? The, the brilliant mind of Justin Forster, as we know. If you're the coach of one of these teams, what are you doing to change the way this game goes? Well, I would look at trying to get some pace in behind, especially off uh, Kendall on the, uh, the right center back because Barlu, he, he, Barlu, he does a great job going forward. He go, goes inverted in possession, but then his recoveries and in transition, they have to hit that space in behind. Now, is that going to be the number 10 of Matt Whelan? Martinez prefers the ball at feet. I, I believe Ayutu, Ayutu is doing a really good job against him. He's not really getting in behind Ayutu at all, but they've, they've got to look at some pace up front to get in behind 1v1 in those transitions because Berlew's out of, out of position. When you look at the bench, Cyrus Harmon, who I've seen before here at Valley Stadium, is dangerous. He's quick, he can hold the ball up. I would like to see him come into the game. From Monrovia, Liberia, West Africa. He is indeed played for Lindsey Wilson, the Blue Raiders down in Tennessee. He also played in Laredo, Texas in college. So he's been all around the map and we could see him in the 11 in the second half. He's got a goal and an assist in 10 matches this season. The 5'10", 180 striker could be a guy who comes in for Whelan or for Martinez in those attacking roles. We'll take a quick break and be right back in just a moment with more halftime coverage. Nil-nil between Kings Hammer and Kalamazoo. And the second half is in just a moment on CISN. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. To me, it means being there 24-7. Rain or shine, during storms, after storms. Being a first responder to the community, to my customers. Being there to get the customers back on and to see the smiles on their face. To provide the kind of reliability that we can hold our heads high about. And we want to keep our customers safe. Safety's first around here. And that's rewarding. I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. 
And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Here in the heartland, at the heart of everything cool, Greater Des Moines is more than its features. It's a feeling. A feeling of discovery and wonder everywhere you turn. Catch what you've been missing. Des Moines, the S's are silent, our city is booming. When I think about the Mini Pitch Initiative, I think about creating equal access to allow youth to have confidence in themselves to develop teamwork. You know, for me, sports were always a huge part of my life, and I want other people to have that same experience that I did. When you revitalize space in the community, you are, you are able to allow people to come together. We've worked really hard with the U.S. Soccer Foundation over the past couple years and bringing pitches all over the country. We're really proud of being able to create spaces for kids to play and grow. At the end of the day, soccer is just a conduit. It's allowing kids to develop and giving them the tools that they need for life. That's what soccer means to me. Midway through this opening match of the Central Conference playoffs between Kings Hammer FC and Kalamazoo FC, two teams making their way to Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. Justin Forster is alongside myself, Danny Cutula, with live coverage, and we're in the midst of halftime right now. Justin, give us an idea of how we got to this scoreline. There were certainly chances, and just a few that weren't put away, and a few that were just a little bit unlucky. Yeah, just some technical glitches in front of goal but not just that some really good defending as you can see here <coughs> Gumba Gumbale at the far just on the far side that was the first initial chance where he ballooned it over the bar leaning back it was all off balance here's the chance here for Kalamazoo as they look to break into the box a really good back heel there into Lockwood Lockwood looking to just place it he could have maybe just put a bit bit of power onto that and just leaned into it and Taking a really good strike here again. Lockwood has been dangerous in the two in the one v two v one situation. Ayetu did really well just to keep him wide, and Brian Pratt was just positioned in a really positioning was really really good at that particular moment to parry it away. Yeah, you see the cross coming in here from Cookland. Tom Cookland with a lovely cross in eludes everyone. Martinez there on the far post again. Good defending with the challenge there. Matt Whelan under pressure just ballooning the ball over the bar. And here's your next moment in the game where the ball is played in wide here to Pineda. He could have done better with this. Laid it down. Sorry, my apologies on that. That was laid off there for, from Tony Pineda. And it was ballooned over the bar by Hernandez, the left back. Yeah, certainly plenty of chances for both sides. Early on, they were mostly coming from the boys in Black King's Hammer. But Kalamazoo found their way late on in that first half. We mentioned Cyrus Harmon, a guy who could come off the bench for Kalamazoo. Looking at this seven, the substitutes bench for Kings Hammer, who's somebody who you see that could come in and maybe change this game? I'll tell you what, the wearing jersey number 27, Damji scored two goals in his last game. He was effective. You know, he's someone you could bring him in, bring into the game, but who do you bring him in for? You know, you've got Gumbele that's playing really, really well. Reinhardt, Pineda. If, he, if he's going to come in, he's, he's a dangerous player. From what I last saw, saw of him in the last game, scoring two goals, he, he's effective, he gets into good positions. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the moment to make a change, but I, I can see Damji coming into the game around the 60th minute, 65th. Well, we'll see what we see in this early second half, and we'll see if it affects the game. We'll go to another break and be right back in a moment on CISN. obsessively, relentlessly at your service. To me, it means being there 24 seven, rain or shine, during storms, after storms. Being a first responder to the community, to my customers. Being there to get the customers back on and to see the smiles on their face. To provide the kind of reliability that we can hold our heads high about. And we want to keep our customers safe. Safety's first around here. And that's rewarding. Hi. 
Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. You get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Here in the heartland, at the heart of everything cool, Greater Des Moines is more than its features. It's a feeling. A feeling of discovery and wonder everywhere you turn. Catch what you've been missing. Des Moines, the S's are silent, our city is booming. When I think about the Mini Pitch Initiative, I think about creating equal access to allow youth to have confidence in themselves to develop teamwork. You know, for me, sports were always a huge part of my life, and I want other people to have that same experience that I did. When you revitalize space in the community, you are, you are able to allow people to come together. We've worked really hard with the U.S. Soccer Foundation over the past couple years and bringing pitches all over the country. We're really proud of being able to create spaces for kids to play and grow. At the end of the day, soccer is just a conduit. It's allowing kids to develop and give them the That's what soccer means to me. Second half of play is just ahead of us. Nil-nil between Kings Hammer and Kalamazoo. Two teams with a lot of quality and with a lot of intentions. They have a lot of hopes for getting well beyond this first round, but they've got to get past these next 45 minutes. One of these teams, Justin, is going to go through. Whether it takes extra time, whether it takes penalties, we are going to have a winner in the Central Conference quarterfinal. And when it comes down to that level of pressure, there's only a few players who can rise to that occasion. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, there has to be a winner. But if there's gonna be, if there's an early goal here for the start of the second half, this game will open up, and you'll see that the team that's one nil down will start, ex you know, exposing players, trying to get players forward and into the game. But it is hot out there, Danny. That's for sure. I'll be interested one to see what Kalamazoo have come out with. If the shape stays the same, if they're gonna congest the midfield and how they're going to press the ball to stop the actual diagonal balls being played in because there's overloads on either side in, in a quick switch of the point of attack. But, you know, K K Kalamazoo have done really, really well covering that, and they've had some good chances. Something that uh, Kings Hammer head coach Paul Nicholson mentioned, he's in his second season with Kings Hammer. He said, we're going into the playoffs with a really positive mindset, and he says, my job this weekend will be making sure that we're working correctly to put ourselves in the best possible situation. Seems like it comes down to the work ethic for him. Uh, how was the work ethic for you, for King Samer in that first half? I thought it was brilliant, to be honest with you. I think the, the players listened. Looks like they're coachable. They went to plan. You know, just you got to look at a couple of flaws. You know, they've been, they've been punished with a couple of square balls in midfield in transition. They've had players that are now out of position after that. You know, when it's congested, especially when Kalamazoo pressured the ball and they had numbers around the ball the square ball is not going to work the, the flick around the corner is going to be a problem but that's when the transitional piece comes in I just don't think that Kalamazoo have been effective when they've had those moments in the game well we'll see how many more moments of the game like that that we get second 45 is coming up in just a moment kicking off moving from left to right in this second half in all black will be King Sammer of course, the five seed and the four seed moving from right to left. That's Kalamazoo FC in their sky blue and dark blue away strip. Second half ready to go. Taylor Reinhardt and Aiden Abril are in your picture. About ready to get this second half squared away. Do want to let you know that in other action around the Central Conference, we were mentioning Chicago FC United taking on Peoria City. Chicago FC United did weather that late challenge from Peoria and grab a 3-1 win 
Peoria City went down to nine men, and that certainly had an effect on it. Second half underway here between King's Hammer and Kalamazoo. King's Hammer trying to go forward quickly, and it's what we saw from them in the first half. It's Aiden Avril. Moves it out right, a lot of space. And this will be Burlu. Burlu will cross it in from deep. No one's there. Early challenge weathered by Kalamazoo. No changes at this point here, Danny, from what I've seen in, in both lineups that have come out. So it's the same starting lineups that went off at halftime, but I suspect we get, we'll see some changes moving into the game. That's certainly the expectation. Taking a goal kick now, Hunter Morse. Played every single match this season for Kalamazoo. 31 saves on the year, two clean sheets. And away goes this goal kick. Across midfield, and Kalamazoo maybe a chance to possess. Not quite. Cleared away by Carson Kendall on that occasion. And IAT was there again with Martinez with the initial ball that was won. And like you mentioned there, Carson Kendall just clearing it out for a throw. In. Chance for Matt Lockwood to throw this one in. He will, and he'll go long. Chance to cross in from here. Just ran out of real estate. And King Samuel will get the ball back. Are you two just ushering that ball out of play? Did he enough there? He's actually had a, he had a very good first half, just apart from initial misclearances on two occasions back to back, but otherwise he's, he's been pretty consistent. Long ball away from ART. And Kalamazoo right back on the ball. They give it away quickly. And in this area of the pitch, that's where Calum or King Samuel, I should mention, could be dangerous. That was Malik Goling. Mikael Goling, I should say, trying to get forward. And surely a foul that time, just impeding the run down the left. And that will give us a free kick for Kings Hammer FC. Refereeing decision, by the way, brought to you by Vision Park Eye Care, proudly serving Des Moines area with friendly staff and quality eye care. Lockwood was just showing a, just a little bit of experience there by pulling the shirt of Pineda and just pulling him back. Pineda was really, really frustrated with that. And these are little things that can put a player off their game. Matt Whelan from the center of the midfield circle. He's moving forward. He plays it to Martinez. Pepe Martinez moves out left. Can he get a shot away? He can't. Bobby Burlew got the all-important intervention in the 48th minute. Out for an early corner for Kalamazoo. Well, Pepe Martinez there, the ball just bounced away from him didn't quite have the right technique and Burlew just kicking the ball out of bounds and bobbling everywhere and it's again a corner to Kalamazoo and just taking his time before he sends it away Dara O'Rourden from Valencolic Community School out there in Cork Ireland Efong the target and he nearly got there but Good intervention defensively out for another corner. We'll try it again. Something different there with uh, Fang. They, they went near post, bending ball in near post. He's normally on the far post there to nod the ball across. I mean, he was well, well dealt with in the first half, that's for sure. Well, Rorden, the set-piece specialist, will send another one into the box. And it comes. Far post this time. No one can get a header. Nothing clean anyway. Played back into the box that time by Lada, and nothing doing there either. This time going down. Might have been ART that time, or maybe. No, it's not. It's not ART. Doesn't look like anybody on the back line. Still trying to figure out who that is. We'll let you know when we can, but in the meantime, it'll be a free kick for King Sammer. And it's going to be Aiden Avril in the end. Two goals, one assist, and a yellow card on the year for the six-foot central midfielder, Aiden Abril. Only player from either side representing Maryland. Pretty far away from us here in the center of the U.S. So, representing the East Coast. Set up the left side. Along the touchline, King's Hammer in possession with Pineda. Pineda gives it away. Referee blows his whistle. It was over the touchline, and it'll be a Kalamazoo throw-in. A good press there from Kalamazoo as the initial pass 
Hernandez was closed down really quickly there by Lockwood. And the second ball in behind was well read there by Carson Kendall. This one cleared away after a really nice spin in the center of the box by Pepe Martinez. Didn't quite amount to anything. He's got some clever dribbling skills on him, doesn't he? We've seen it a couple of times. Yeah, he does. He does. He just, it's, it's not going his way so far. I mean, he, but that's what it is for a center forward. He's showing some frustration, but it just takes one moment in the game where he could actually get that one pat particular chance because he's, he's a goal scorer. We know he can score goals. Matt Whelan goes to the turf, and that's got to be a warm place to be this time of day in Des Moines. You see that challenge there. Yeah, just trying to get underneath was Taylor Dyson in defensive midfield. And Whelan went flying. So Dara O'Rourden again will take a step piece. This time not a corner, but a free kick from the left flank. He does have Whelan with him. Whelan a 6-3 target. I'm surprised he's not in the box. Yeah, someone with that height. Whelan should be in the box, that's for sure. And looks like say that, there he goes. Yeah, it looks like Royden's go O'Rourden's going to step up and take it. And it goes from O'Rourden. Header away from King's Hammer, hooked out. Right side of attack. Chance for Russo to play this one in. He will do. Try to find Lada. Still in the area. Riordan couldn't pick it up. Sent back in one more time. Nobody getting around ART. Excellent work that time by the center back from Ghana to make sure no one in blue got around him. It's a goal kick. Well, AAT again did it. You know, the cr initial cross came in, cleared it to the top of the penalty box. Again, the th King's Hammer didn't step out quick enough. But uh, it was well defended there, as you could see. AA2 just shielded that ball out of bounds. It looks like he's enjoying himself at this particular moment, like I said earlier on. But, you know, Kalamazoo now have, have the momentum going from right to left in their sky blue jerseys. So we'll see a goal kick to come from Bryant Pratt. He had to come up big a couple of times in that first half, didn't he? Made some point-blank saves. And they'll send this one across midfield. Kalamazoo doesn't like it on their side. They'll send it right back over. Nice setter by Chase Strine. And can the boys in blue pick it up? They will. It's sent long. Whelan off to chase it. Powerful. Couldn't quite hold on, though. Excellent first challenge to just muscle Burlew off the ball. Burlu says, nope, ball get there the second time and clear it away out for what should be another corner kick. Burlu just swung his right leg at it, hoping it will go anywhere, went for a corner. Uh, it looks like O'Royden, again, stepping up to take the corner with his right foot in swing out. Be interesting to see what he does here with uh, Ifang now going to the far post. He was on the near post earlier on and just looking for that ball. And he's more effective on the far post, as you can see out of our picture. He's actually drifting into the near post area. See if he's the target of this cross. Corner kick comes in. O'Rourden. Back post. And again, King Sammer just getting there first. Long distance shot, and that never had much of a chance of finding the target. But why not? I mean, if you don't buy a, a ticket to the raffle, you can't win, as they say. Well, that's true. I wish I won something on the lottery, but <laughs> I haven't bought a ticket for a while. So there you go, Danny. But that particular corner came in was very, very dangerous. Again, well dealt with with the two defenders just on the far post to clear the lines. And now King's Hammer <coughs> beside kind of taking their time a little bit more. We saw this towards the end of the first half when Kalamazoo were pressing and going forward a little bit more. King's Hammer preferring to try and keep them from playing fluidly like they like to do. But despite their best efforts, Kalamazoo right back on the ball. Adrian Corona from Plainfield, Illinois. Plays for the NIU Huskies. Deft move that time by Whelan. Can he get into the box? Along the goal line and just put off enough by Kendall. Nice running backwards for the center back to allow for a goal kick. Kendall did enough there, just stepping across Matt Whelan just to protect the ball out, shield it out of play with Whelan just on his left shoulder. He did enough. But you can see now that the pressure's mom momentum is now going, obviously, in the blue shirt's way from right to left. Uh, I would like to see for King's Hammer... Gumbele getting on the ball a little more, running at players. We haven't seen it in the first 10 minutes of the second half. Another goal kick is away from Pratt, and that one less successful, directly out of bounds. 
And a throw in now for Corona. Wheeling again. Nice movement off the ball to give himself space, but a good challenge. Wins the ball back for Aiden Abril. AOT. Just teasing into space. He'll play it out wide. Taylor Dyson. Dyson, a sports management major at Notre Dame College. Plays for the Falcons there for its college soccer. Getting forward now. Potentially a chance. Comes from Taylor Reinhardt. Moved out wide. Left side across is charged down. Getting to it is Dyson. 40 yards from goal. Hernandez plays it long. Cross in, again blocked, and stayed in bounds. Kalamazoo able to prevent a corner kick. Abril beaten to the ball. Kalamazoo need to clear it. Headed backwards, and it is eventually sent out of play for a King Samer throw. That's how quickly King Samer can get forward and threaten with a counterattack. Yeah, and Kalamazoo couldn't quite clear their lines as they were pressed there. It was a good split pass on the far left-hand side in between the two defenders to allow for that cross to come in. It was dealt with. And again, as you can see, Kalamazoo looking to break the lines. That was some challenge in there. And you can see Carson Kendall has gone down, clutching the inside of his foot as Ayeti just plays the ball out of bounds. I never want to see that. Carson Kendall wearing the captain's armband today for King Sammer. And just favoring that left leg. See him try to use his right, and it's a little bit labored for him. Hope he'll be able to carry on. ART, I think, played the ball out, but the referee whistled to stop play before that. So when we do get back in, as we'll give you an idea of how Kendall got there to the ground, it was that right there. Comes in on that challenge and I think just gets the worst end. Trying to tackle Dara O'Riordan. And while we've got Kendall on the floor, I think the referees are going to kill two birds with one stone and give us a hydration break in the process. Yeah, there was nothing malicious in the tackle there. I mean, O'Riordan was going forward and the momentum was going forward and, and Carson Kendall just came in and with his right foot just challenged him and with that momentum, it, it looks like it's hurting him. It's causing him an issue there. Hopefully, hopefully it's not too serious. And it looks like it's on the inside of his right foot on the instep. But hopefully it's not too serious and that they would have to make a change, King's Hammer. Although they do have a, another center back warming up on the sideline just in case. But I think this is really bothering him as you can see he's gingerly just walking off the field. And it just makes those little knocks, those little injuries so much worse when it's almost 100 degrees outside and you're already laboring just to be out there on the pitch and then you pick up an injury. and I mean, it's so hard to, to get past those physical and mental obstacles. Yeah, it is. And, you know, obviously for a player like you know Carson Kendall, one of the captains, the leaders in the team, he doesn't want to go off right now. He wants to continue playing. And hopefully for his sake that he can continue, he is frustrated, as you can see, but there was nothing in the tackle. Like I said, Aroy didn't managed to you know it was a fair tackle momentum going forward looks like he does want to play he takes a quick swig of his water bottle little movements on the sideline just to test it out but i think if anything they'll decide when to make the change but i do see the other center back possibly coming in he's putting his jersey on and i think kendall uh, kendall is done still in for now but you've got two options off the bench for king samer cam torito and Ethan Garvey are both center backs and fits. They're in the 18, could be selected. In the meantime, some pressure coming in from Taylor Reinhardt. Dealt with well by Kalamazoo, but you do have both those options defensively. We'll see who it is. We are going to see a change. And we're assuming Kendall's going to be the one to come off. He is. So coming in is Ethan Garvey. He's played in 11 matches already this season. He's a guy who's seen a lot of time. Not exactly you know, your, your average second choice guy off the bench. He's played and started in a lot of matches. He's got one assist on the year, despite being a center back. Originally hails from New Orleans, Louisiana. Kalamazoo would like to get forward quickly. They've got the space to do so. Moving out left, it's Cooklin. Abril defending. Cooklin holds onto the ball. Edge of the box, curls one in, and it's just wide. 
Well, there's the layoff. First piece of defending there by Ethan Garvey, putting pressure on Martinez as Martinez played a one-touch one ball into the path here of Tom Cooklin. Good defending here at the end of the day. Cooklin doing all the leg work. A little bit tired in the end with the, the strike, trying to bend it around the goalkeeper, Brian Pratt. And Martinez, again, had made a forward run. He was calling for it. He's very demanding in his way. He's winning that ball back, that's for sure. But it was a really clean layoff into Cookland's path to, to allow him to break the lines. Kalamazoo back on the ball in the attacking third. This is Whelan. Plays it in for Martinez. Wants to get a shot away, trying to just carve out some space, and he couldn't do it. Excellent defending, as they've done all match long. King Sammer. Sent long, and this is Mikel Goling. The lanky central midfielder. He'll play it in for Pineda. Pineda has options in the middle. He'll go outside instead. Goes for goal himself. An incredible point blank save. Hunter Morris keeps this one at nil nil. Wow, what a piece of skill there by Pineda. Opening up his hips, taking the ball with his right foot down the line. Beating a fang for the first time in this match. Cleanly delivering with his left foot. As you can see this again. As Pineda, he started the initial move. He comes in here to receive the ball. Opens up. He's in that half space in the danger zone. Delivers. What a great save there by Hunter Morse. But the, he did have options in the middle. That's for sure. He did. And he could have laid it back. But if it would have gone into the back of the net, we wouldn't be saying that now. Absolutely not. By the way, it's an El Beach Shop save. El Beach Shop in downtown Des Moines has the largest craft beer selection west of the Mississippi. Stays nil-nil, and a lot of that is on the shoulders of Hunter Morris. Midfield, so much space for Kalamazoo right now. It's played forward, 40 yards from goal. Martinez, out left. O'Rourdon. Whelan has space. He can go for goal. He did earlier. He will now. Aerty blocks that one. Cooklin latches onto it. Right side, Lockwood. Back for Cooklin. Wants a ball in. Megs' his defender gets into the box. The layoff, and it's just out of the reach of O'Reilly. Another shot comes in. That one's dealt with by Burlu. Keeps coming in waves and waves. Adrian Lara moves it out left. Corona. Kalamazoo smelled blood in the water. That one was not the best from Corona as far as services into the box are concerned. Long ball and a chance to counter. This is where King's Hammer are really dangerous. Pineda could be all alone if he deals with this defender. Absolutely not. Federico Russo, excellent defending, gets on the floor. Both players going forward, and the referee will whistle for a foul. Pineda took the worst of that challenge, but he was the instigator that time, the guilty party. And the two that were battling for it, Russo and Pineda, Russo just gets up and just gives him a hand up. But, yeah, that was a, a free kick. That's definitely uh, an infraction. I believe it was a yellow card as we uh, are talking about this to Pineda. But the initial pass that was played over the top there, just going over Fre Federico Russo's head, and there was Pineda running onto it. But I tell you what, Russo, great job defending. And a goal kick to results. And uh, just to confirm, it is going to be a yellow card to King Sammer's number 28, Tony Pineda. It's his first yellow card of the season. Meanwhile, a throw in for Kalamazoo. So by my count, that's one yellow card for each side, Justin. One earlier on in the first half to Tom Cooklin, the attacking midfielder. And now Tony Pineda, the left winger, sees the referee's book. Midfield good, build up play, linking up in midfield. Still a chance for Kalamazoo to get forward. Oh, you saw the idea from Pepe Martinez, trying to find Whelan running to his outside. This one given away. High pressure from Kalamazoo, wins them the ball back. Martinez wants to go at his defender, it's Burlu. Oh, the side-footed pass in was again dealt with on the back line. It's not been easy, but King's Hammer have been up to the task defensively all afternoon long. Yeah, Martinez just drifting out wide to our near left-hand side. Just a little bit of a change, running at Berlieu there, but just changing his movements, coming out wide to the left. It's healthy, it's good, just a little bit of a change-up. Obviously, Matt Whelan went into the nine. 
and then Royden was breaking on the far right hand side but you can tell there's some tired legs out there I mean we saw in the first half Robbie Burlew was getting forward with immense pace up and down the right hand side he's been a little bit withdrawn in the second half here but that's partly because they're being pinned back by Kalamazoo well while we're here in a couple other conferences, some one seeds are in danger of losing to eight seeds. Two teams losing right now who have one seeds. Capital FC are down 2-0 to San Francisco Glens over in the Western Conference. And meanwhile, in extra time, six minutes of added time. One of them is already gone. West Virginia United leading Nona FC in the Eastern Conference. The Southern Conference, I should say, out there in Florida. So as of right now, a couple of one seeds that could go down. Of course, this being the four and five matchup in the Central Conference. Right side, Kalamazoo looking for another ball in. It's another great ball in, and no one is there that time in the six-yard box. Still potentially danger. Kalamazoo will recycle. Lockwood plays it in. No one there. Headed back out. King's Hammer receiving a... Nasty challenge that time, and it will be a free kick. I imagine we could see a card as well. That's exactly what Aaron Valley set it out to do. And that one will go to number 22, Chase Strine. So Strine kicks up the second yellow card for Kalamazoo tonight. And yeah, that's, I mean, it's a glancing contact. It's not malicious necessarily, but certainly holds up the, the promising counterattack. Yes, he's trying just coming in late there, trying to win the ball. He was a little bit off, that's for sure. As we can see, some changes coming in. Well, I believe, well, there's two for King's Hammer, first of all. They're both in midfield. You see him coming off. Taylor Dyson and Aiden Abril. Coming in our number four, Ben Hegge in central midfield. And another player we're still not sure about. But we know Abril and Dyson are off. Meanwhile, for King Sammer on is Hegji. And we're still waiting on confirmation of the other player who's come in. There's also been a change for Kalamazoo. And that one is a guy we mentioned in the halftime break. Cyrus Harmon is in. He's come in for Kalamazoo, and I believe he's replaced Pepe Martinez, if I'm not mistaken. So 21, Martinez is off. Cyrus Harmon, number seven, is on. That's confirmed for Kalamazoo in the 68th minute. And again, still working on that second change in midfield for King's Hammer. 68 minutes gone, still nil-nil between Kalamazoo and King's Hammer. And Kalamazoo have been the aggressors in this second half. Controlled the run of play for the most part. And I want to say that center back Cam Torito has come in on the back line right there. He's just gotten a touch to the ball. Not exactly sure who that is. Well, we will figure that out and let you know when we can. But just earlier on there, Danny, before the actual substitutions came in that little no look reverse pass that was played by tom cooklin out wide for matt lock lockwood to deliver that ball was absolutely superb with some fantastic technique in that this one sent long and one on the header by the substitute ben hegge on the ball a or t and we can tell you confirmed it is cam torito Normally, dispatch does a center back, but he can play in defensive midfield. Here's Kalamazoo coming the other way, and this is dangerous. Shirt pulled, could still go for goal, an incredible save. And it stays nil-nil from Bryant Pratt's incredible stop. Point blank range for the fourth time today. We've seen both keepers do it, but it'll be a goal kick. And what's interesting about that, Justin, is Kalamazoo wanted advantage to come back, but the referee Aaron Valley, you saw him on the screen saying, I gave you advantage, you took the shot. Well, i tell you what, as you look at this, again, an interception, poor pass from out wide there, well intercepted. Look at the shirt pulling there by the substitute Cam Torito. 
But I tell you what, what a great save diving to his right hand side was Brian Pratt with another fantastic save. But like you said, once you've had that momentum going forward, you've got the shot off, you can't bring it back, and it's good refereeing. It is. Aaron Valley's done a good job in the center this afternoon. That one cleared very long and high by Adrian Lara. In midfield, winning it back, Harmon. And he will commit a foul in the end. A little bit of physicality there. But the Liberian, Cyrus Harmon, will commit a foul. The two substitutes there was Cam Torito against Cyrus Harmon. Harmon's a very physical player. He gets himself about. I've seen him play before his quality. He can score goals. His movement is good. He can get, get him behind center backs. So a good change there from Kalamazoo's side. And we'll see another free kick. This one a little bit closer into goal and another yellow card. That one's going to go to the big center back in the middle of defense, Paul Effang. His second season with Kalamazoo, his third yellow card on the season. Also has a red card to his name this season. And I just wonder, because for me, the foul, the contact came from Cooklin. Yeah, I'm very surprised about that, because Cooklin was the initial challenge. And here's why it's relevant, Justin. He's already on a yellow. So Cooklin, if Cooklin was the one who made the contact and should have received the yellow, that would send Cooklin off. So I think Kalamazoo, if that is a mistake, are very fortunate in that regard. Yes, they are very fortunate because it was Cooklin with the initial foul. It wasn't really malicious from Ifang, the second one. Ball comes in from King Sammer and no joy there. Sent back in. Hegji, that one claimed high and safely by Hunter Morris. Wearing his flamboyant orange today. And in the 72nd minute, still no score between these two. Both teams are creating chances. They're going for goal, but just not quite having what is required to beat two incredible keepers in between the sticks of both these goals. Going back to that yellow card, I'm, I'm surprised, unless the officials are seeing something different because the fourth hasn't indicated anything. The AR, either ARs hadn't indicated anything, to be honest with you. So I'm just very, very surprised uh, about that because there was nothing malicious with Ifang. I wonder if we can get another look at that and, and just see if there was anything in the buildup. Because for me, the angle that we saw on screen, uh, for me, it showed Cooklin making contact. I'm wondering if Ifang made contact before then and he whistled a foul initially. That's the, that's the only thing that I think could potentially be the case. I think maybe you said something. Oh, it's possible too. So he could have said something, descent to the referee. So that's possible. But we'll go to a drinks break in any case. 73rd minute. If we get a chance to see that replay, we'll show it to you. If not, we'll do with what we've got. But in either case, no real, nothing necessarily that we can do about it at this point. Stays nil-nil. Kings Hammer and Kalamazoo going for it. Uh, tactically, I think they both want to get this goal in regular time. But neither side has been able to come up with it. Be interested to see what happens here because, you know, Ben 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 Hedgy, I mean, he's scored two goals in his last game. He, he's a local lad from northern Kentucky, you know, Cincinnati area. And, um, you know, he's he scored two goals in the last game. I'll be interested to see what what an impact he will be in this game, what kind of an effect he'll be in this game. It's so hot out there, Danny. I just I just don't know how they're doing it at this at this minute. <laughs> and you see. There's so much fatigue. The heat is, is really wearing on these guys as you see them on the sideline, getting a drinks break, getting a chance to just rest themselves almost more mentally than physically. As weird as that seems, it's really a mental game at this point when you're under that much physical duress, making sure that you do the little things right. Yeah, absolutely. Like, we haven't seen Robbie Burlu, Burlu go forward like he did in the first half. You know, it's a mental thing. It could have been instructions from the, you know, halftime talk just to play a little bit safer. You know, and obviously Kalamazoo looking to expose Berlu on that on that area on the right hand side, which is our near side. But but yes, definitely you you get the the physical physical fatigue, but mental fatigue is key here because you can make critical errors. Back line, King Sammer with it. Right side, it's Berlu. And this is Gumbale, and he will go down. 
A free kick again for King Samer. I think Kalamazoo have definitely had the edge and fouls committed. Yeah, definitely. A, a ball played in here by Burlu, looking for, you know, Gumbalu, who's just brought down there, late tackle there by Lara. Lara, basically, Lara was just stretching a leg out there, just bringing, bringing him, bringing down Gumbalu for the initial foul. Kalamazoo winning it back, and they'll spray it out wide quickly. Whelan's on it. He's got Harmon, the substitute, in the middle. He'll try and play it to him. Harmon just a half step behind it. Torito will play it to ART. And still under pressure. Kalamazoo with this high press. They win it back again. Harmon takes a push. No foul. And they'll lose possession. King's Hammer trying to go the other way. Reinhardt with a glancing touch, but doesn't go anywhere. Russo for Lara. You just get this feeling something's going to happen, Danny, you know, just with the balls that are played into the wide areas there. I mean, Matt Whelan making that run, initial run down the right-hand side. Cyrus Harmon getting inside the defender. Ethan Garvey who just came on, but Ethan Garvey did enough just to get a toe to that to clear the lines. It's going to take something special, the right ball, the right movements, you know, the extra two yards. I mean, this game's about mar margins and moments. Could there be a moment here? Kumbale crosses it in and it's deflected. It did not quite get over that goal line, so I think we'll see a throw in deep in attacking territory rather than a corner. Well, there was Kumbale up against Shea Strine. I mean, both of them really tight, putting in the effort. Kumbale looked for the cross, nearly got the corner out of it. As you can see, you've got Robbie Burlew just walking up to the ball for the throw in with one option. Yeah, not many choices at the moment. Gumbale is the man who's there. Instead, he'll throw it very long and try to make an option out of no option. Headed away, but Kalamazoo can't quite hold on to possession. Hagji. Hernandez. That one is deflected by Strine. And Hernandez has it again, trying to recoup possession for King Sammer. Nice little nutmeg, but nothing more than that. Strine's got it, and there's players going long. Cyrus Harmon, to be specific, he'll latch onto a long ball that wasn't quite long enough for him to run with it, but he still got it at his feet. Two players on him, plays it square. Cooklin moved out wide. O'Rourden, all the way wide now for Lockwood. Try to beat his defender, no. Excellent work by Hernandez, but he gives it away. Cooklin's got it again, cleared out by Torito. And it must have taken a touch off of Kalamazoo last. It'll be a King's Hammer goal kick. Well, again, you can see some lazy challenges in there, but what a ball out there by O'Royden into Lockwood's front back foot to go forward, as you see here. Just plays the ball into Lockwood. Lockwood with just a little bit of a dummy there, trying to get past Hernandez. But Cam Torito coming in just in the nick of time to cause a deflection and a goal kick. Substitution in the meantime for Kalamazoo. I believe coming off is Tom Cooklin. And replacing him is going to be number 11, Eduardo Calvo Salinas from Madrid, Spain. But he went to Piedmont High School. Plays for the Iona Gales after transferring from Seattle Pacific and from Portland University. And he will fill that attacking midfield role that Cooklin will depart. Kalamazoo on the ball again. Russo sends it forward, and Harmon, is he able to beat ART? Well, he got a touch to it, but he couldn't keep it in play, and that will yield a goal kick. ART did well there again, but as you can see, space is now being exposed by the left back and the right back, Robbie. Robbie Burlew and Hernandez. This time it was Hernandez on the far left-hand side, but what's happening is now is Kalamazoo are utilizing that space there and the, and the pace of Cyrus Har Harmon. But I tell you what, AA2 again, he was there just to usher that ball out and just shield it out of play. But he's going to have his hands full there with Harmon. Long throw in by Whelan. It finds Harmon. Edge of the box. Lays it off. O'Rourden. The substitute, Carlos Salinas, has space. He'll move it out to the left instead. Whelan. Whelan goes for goal and it's over the bar. Well, I tell you what, some giveaways there, no pressure. 
Calvo Salinas had some time and space. There was no pressure on him. I know he's just getting into the game. As you can see there, I thought he was going to have it right there with his right foot. As we could see that, oh, it just goes over the bar. And again, it's just uh, fatigue is now building in it as AA2 is on the ground there in his penalty box. You can see some players stretching out their calves. And there's lots, of, I believe it's cramp and it looks like cramp. It's a cramp kind of day, isn't it? It's awfully warm out there. Gotta stay hydrated. Lalas ART on the floor. Left center back, six foot two, 180. In his second season with Kings Hammer, went to Manya Krobo Senior High back in Ghana before joining the High Point Panthers in North Carolina. 80 and a half minutes gone, and there's still no score. Not something we say often here at CISN with Des Moines Menace matches. But it's the situation we've got ourselves in today. And again, keep in mind, it's playoff time. We have to decide a winner. And we'll go to extra time if necessary. We'll go to penalty kicks if necessary. We are not leaving this pitch until someone wins. Ethan Garvey just nodding that ball back to his goalkeeper. Brian Pratt. Brian Pratt's had a great game so far with two fantastic saves. The one you saw earlier on in this second half. Dive to his right-hand side. In midfield, Cam Torito from McKeesport, Pennsylvania to South Allegheny High School. Plays for the Duquesne Dukes after transferring in from Western Illinois. Ethan Garvey. Now sent long, and the intended target was Gumbale. But instead, again, right by that corner flag, but not quite over the goal line. So this time Kalamazoo have possession, and instead of a goal kick, they'll have a throw in. Pinedo just coming into the space there to pick up the initial pass. Turning is over, hit the ball out, but it's deep down on our near side. Kalamazoo half. This, gives, this could give the opportunity for Kings Hammer to press here and try and win the ball deep in their half. And that's exactly what King Samer will do. They'll win the ball off the press. Torito, long ball. Reinhardt was there first, but he couldn't hold on with that first touch. O'Rourdon, plenty of players forward. Kalamazoo with numbers. Whalen has it. He's got players on both sides. Might go for goal himself. Still has it, but loses it in the end. Just held on to it a little bit long you feel for that situation, left side. This is Pineda for Kings Hammer, looking to go the other way. They could have numbers as well. Kings Hammer could. We'll give the ball away in midfield. Here comes Kalamazoo, end to end stuff. You'll love to see it as a neutral outside of the boot. Beautiful technique. Cyrus Harmon's got it. Can he cut back and go for goal? He'll cut back and play a pass. No, it's still no goal. Incredible stop from Bryant Pratt. He stood on his head. And Darrow Rarden is giving the universal sign for what do I have to do to stop this goalkeeper? Well, we spoke about S Cyrus Harmon's pace, gets in the, off the blindside shoulder of Ethan Garvey, lays it off, and what a great save there again. Brian Pratt there to save the day, but we did speak about Harmon's pace. He's made good use of it so far. 84th minute, cross comes in, headed away at the near post, A.R.T. Headed back into the area by Kalamazoo. Still in, no, the referee says it's over. And that will give possession back to King's Hammer. So much danger, so many chances created from Kalamazoo. Still nothing to show for it on the score sheet. Yeah, and, and again, we'll go back to another big moment in the game where IA2, you know, won a tackle, he intercepted a pass just earlier on to clear the lines and the ball was up there for Pineda, but in the transitional moments from attacking to defending, is that we can see this down the left-hand side here. What a ball for Pineda. Pineda gets onto it, wants to go central, finds Kumbale. Kumbale cuts back, tricky dribbling, lays it off. Shot from distance is charged down. Strine got there. Now it's O'Rourdon. Kalamazoo breaking. Another long distance pass, and it does not beat the header from six foot seven Ethan Garvey. That was positional play from Ethan Garvey was phenomenal there, but you can see what they're trying to do now is these diagonal balls in behind there looking for Cyrus, Cyrus Harmon, because he's fresh, he's got the pace to get him behind. Getting in behind now, an incisive ball, but it's intercepted by Paul Efong. Calvo Salinas. Could not get around Torito. Torito just gave him an extra 
Little push to get him on the ground. Gumbale. Gumbale crosses in. Good idea. Excellent defending. At that near first time of asking, this is Adrian Corona. Plays it forward. Advanced. And Harmon couldn't get there in time. It's over the touch line. King's Hammer back on the ball. A couple more changes for King's Hammer, but not quite yet. They're limpering up over there. And only a few more outfield options for them. We might see that change now. Another King's Hammer throw, and the referees will signal for that change to be made. A double change, as we mentioned. And coming off, looks like we'll see Tony Pineda on the left wing. He'll be replaced by Reese Albaugh, another winger. You'll also see leaving the pitch Mikel Goling and replacing him is Ben Damji. So Damji, a striker by trade, and we talked about who would he go on for. Looks like he's just going to go in there alongside Taylor Reinhardt. Damji is, is the one we were talking about earlier, and I think I might have got a couple of names mixed up here, Danny speaking about them, but Dam Ben Damji is a game winner. He scored two goals in the last game. So this could be the, the moment with four minutes to go, plus a possibility of extra time, which is an extra 30 minutes, two halves of 15, in this, cru in this crucial heat that we're exper experiencing here. Yeah, it seems like more of a task than an enjoyment at this point to play 30 more minutes out there on the pitch. But at the same time, these are 22 players on the pitch who would not rather be anywhere else. This is what they're playing for. This is what they've worked all summer you know, to get into a position like this, and it's all going to come down to moments like this one, a corner kick for the recently substituted on Reese Alba. First team All-Ohio in high school as a senior. Three goals, one assist in his 12 matches from Pickerington in the Buckeye State. In comes his ball. Center of the box, headed away by Efong, the French center back. And Alba will head out to that right corner flag one more time. Efang just going over one of his players, I believe it was Lara, just to clear that ball, just putting everything into it. Be interesting to see what happens here, just that if any of the concentration levels drop with Kalamazoo as they go zonal and man a man to zone on the near post as the cross comes in. And nothing really on that time. Would have liked that cross to go a little bit more central if you're King's Hammer. Instead, it's now a Kalamazoo throw in on the opposite side. It was an outswinger, easily dealt with there. Just a little bit of a deflection came off one of the, the black jerseys that were in the box. But the outswinger was too far out. There was no one really coming in, on, in, in onto it as Kalamazoo with the throw in on the far side. Thrown in by Federico Russo and now taken down with a little bit of fanfare afterwards. We will see a free kick in midfield along that far side. And the foul was certainly the right decision. Matt Whelan was the one to go down. His coach Shane Lyons did describe him as a character, a favorite player in this team. And that right there was the push that was not appreciated <coughs> by anyone for King's Hammer. And the referee's just gonna have a little chat about this one. I think there's gonna be a discussion point here just the retaliation there from Matt Whelan, unnecessary, but I know it's frustration. It's hot out there, and I know there's a lot of frustration. We'll see what the officials do here. Robbie Burlew came across trying to get involved. He just needs to stay out of it, focus on his own game, to be honest with you. Otherwise, you can be pulled out of the game. What will the referee decide to do here? He's just going to call a couple of players over. First, Whelan. What's he get for his shove? A yellow card. So that's another player in the book for Kalamazoo seeing yellow. Will we see anything else from the center referee? Doesn't appear that way. He seems satisfied. He'll write Whelan's details in his book. And as we enter minute number 90, we've seen a few cards by this point, especially in the second half. Three going, four now, against Kalamazoo. One still going against King Sammer. And King Sammer win the ball right back. Instantly, he'll hold on to it in midfield. This is Alba. Wants to go long, instead he'll send it backwards. Great turn, and here comes Hagji off to the races down the right side. He's got two players to pick out with a cross. Can't do so. Second opportunity. Reinhardt couldn't get a shot away. Damji missed his target with the pass, and this is Ayrty. 
And here's he getting forward, a center back well across midfield now. He's got the space to do so. Finds Hegji. Moves it out wide, Gumbale. Maloon Gumbale, that ball in is not the required quality. And they'll have to go for it again. It was a tired delivery there by Gumbale, most definitely leaning back and away from the ball, but a piece of skill there from Hegji earlier on just to spin his defender and break the line. It was this is, this is where the fresh legs hopefully can have an impact into the game and just cause a couple of issues. An issue potentially here. Excellent intervention by Adrian Lara. Otherwise, that was a chance to whip a ball in from barely minutes away. Five minutes of added time, by the way. You see that on your screen. About four and a half left of those. And if we don't get a goal before then, extra time is our destiny here at Valley Stadium. At this point, that seems like a fair result to see extra time come out of this one. I mean, these teams have been fairly even across these two halves. Reese Alba will send in another set piece. He's been the specialist ever since substituting on a few minutes back. Ball comes in, middle of the box, punched away by Hunter Morse. But Kings Hammer are back on it, trying to pick out a pass. Can't do so. Calvo Salinas, smallest player on the pitch, gets out and wins a header. Four on three opportunity. Ball for Harmon. Great challenge by Burlu, but Harmon gets it anyway. Got player to his right. He might go alone. He will go alone. Excellent one-handed save by Bryant Pratt. He cannot put a foot wrong or a hand wrong today. We've had some decisive moments here. We had Morse with an earlier save off the corner, and now Bryant Pratt with another fantastic save there of Cyrus Harmon. Harmon again causing problems as you can see King's Hammer looking to break down the right. Reinhardt cuts inside, wrong decision that time, excellent defending from Kalamazoo. O'Rourdon, another long ball and Harmon looks to be onside. Could not quite beat the run of the goalkeeper that time. Bryant Pratt was able to chase him off. 92 minutes gone, three more of stoppage time at least before we see extra time. Bryant Pratt read that well, just coming out a lot quicker this time and Cyril Harmon, Harmon just saw him and just basically said now you can have it you can tell now he's killing time and maybe just take this game into extra time and 30 minutes 92 and a half gone Pratt sends it away well across midfield Corona's header is going to settle on this left side it's sent long for Harmon. Harmon chests it down, has a player behind him. Torito will take him down from behind, and Torito will see the referee's book. A yellow card for him, and what a golden chance this could be for Kalamazoo just outside the box. Well, as you can see here, Harmon, well played, great technique, not a handball taken on his chest, but he's breaking the line. Ayotu taken out of position, but covering, and then Torito knew what he was doing, just clips him from behind just to earn himself a yellow card. Maybe one of the last chances of regular time for Kalamazoo FC to win this one before 30 more minutes are necessary. Matt Whelan is there with the referee. Looks like he wants to take this one. Carbo Salinas is also there. And it actually looks like it might be O'Rourdon been the set piece guy all match long and if it comes from him it looks like it will Whelan moves away goes for goal and it's over the bar hits the football up right behind the goal and that doesn't count for anything head in his hands he knew that was a good chance that was his moment there Royden he was you can tell he's tired just got too much on it with the benders we can have a look at this again one step in did the right thing just got too much air on it right over the crossbar Again, it could be tired legs. I have to be at this point. Brian Pratt will send another one away. Long, high into the afternoon air. Well won by King Sammer. Can they hold on? They will. Torito. Burlu. Looking to go forward. Picks his head up. Can only find Gumbale. Gumbale back to central midfield. Torito moves it out left. Hernandez. 
potential for a cross here. Does come in, in swinger. Headed away by Kalamazoo, and they clear along. Garvey sends it back into the fray. Headed back and forth, Hernandez tried to find Alba, but out of play for a Kalamazoo throw. Deruso. And that is it. We'll see 30 more minutes, 15 minutes in two more halves between Kalamazoo and Kingshammer. 90 minutes, not enough to decide this one between the four and the five seed. We'll be right back with more Central Conference quarterfinal action. Justin Forster and myself, Danny Catula. We'll see you guys in just a minute because you can't go away from this one. Nil-nil extra time coming up on CISN. At DeArmond Ford Indianola and DeArmond Automotive Knoxville, we want you to experience the DeArmond difference. My dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure your ownership experience is exceptional. We're completing phase two of our major reconstruction project at our Indianola location, providing a state-of-the-art customer lounge and waiting area and soon-to-be all-new showroom, reinvesting back into our communities. DeArmond Ford Indianola and DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Experience the DeArmond difference today. DeArmondAuto.com. One more time. Come on, one more, one more. One more. Been good, done. Nah, no, one more. One more, riding stand. Yeah. What do you think? One more set? Oh. Fine, two more sets. One more. <laughs> Let's go, squad. One more. One more. Three, two, one. One more, man. Oh, man. All right, little bro. Breakfast? One more. Yeah, I'm not hungry either. more. Why do businesses succeed? The Better Business Bureau sees the traits of successful businesses every day. It's not easy, but it is simple. The BBB fosters trust between Iowa businesses and consumers. Visit BBB.org. Extra time is on the way. Kings Hammer FC, the five seed and four seeded Kalamazoo FC out of the Central Conference in the quarterfinal. We're not done yet. We've got 30 more minutes to decide this one. Justin Forster and myself, Danny Katsula, with you on CISN. Live in the commentary booth at Valley Stadium. We're not going away. We weren't anyway. We've got a doubleheader second leg after this. But, I mean, just so much quality in both these two teams. At the end of the day, it didn't quite show itself in these 90 minutes up front. But defensively, and especially in goal, some incredible stuff we've been treated to. Yeah, some fantastic saves and goals. Um, most definitely, as you see here, Cyrus Harmon decides to keep the ball for himself as he had options to his right. He was closed down there by Robbie Burlow, who came across Burlow. But I tell you what, Cyrus Harmon, since he's been on, has, has, has been a problem. He's been a total problem. I mean, he's caused, caused issues for them at the end of the day. So defensively, I think at the back, you know, for um, King's Hammer, I think they've been really good. You know, Ethan Garvey's coming. He stood his ground. He's he's a tall. He's tall. He's strong. And you got AA2. You know, AA2's been given the captain's armband. You know, since the substitution of Kendall. You know, earlier on. But I mean, burley has been good. Hernandez has been fantastic positionally. They've been a little more withdrawn this half. But both sides. And then you look at Poi Fang and Lara and Russo. I mean, they've been fantastic on their end. You know, I mean, it's Corona's just dropped in and just 
covering space and going into back four, but Matt Lockwood would has been given the option to break forward, just to go forward and, and you know create problems. And most of the most of the problems have come on the right hand side, on the far side, defensively for Kings Hammer. And you look at this Kalamazoo bench; they've only brought a couple of players off of it. There's still four players they could add. Obviously, you get seven, so at this point, you've got an extra window that you can substitute in. I think both these teams have all the windows they need. Kings Hammer have one more with this extra time that they can use to bring in Sam Robinson. He's a left winger, could also play on the right wing. We saw Reese Albaugh come in on the left wing to replace Tony Pineda, so I'm guessing if Robinson were to come in for Kings Hammer, he'd go in for Maloon Gumbala. But when you look at King, er, Kalamazoo, I should say, Ryan Bayless is a center back off the bench who hasn't been used yet. Alessandro Dargento is a defensive midfielder who could come in. Gaetano Dargento, his brother, another midfielder who could could come in. Neither side really has a, a true striker to bring on anymore, but both teams with some midfield and attacking options. When you look at Kalamazoo, they've got defensive options. So, w you know, should they go goal up and they want to defend the lead, they might bring in another center back, maybe go four at the back or def another defensive midfielder take out one of their attacking options to try and see the game out. But uh, I, I think my prediction is we're going to get a goal in, the, in these 30 minutes here, Danny. I mean, you can it's going to take a mistake, but, you know, I don't want to say that because both teams have played really well and defensively have done a wonderful job at the back. Both back lines have been tremendous. Feels wrong for one of these two teams to go home, and we'll find out which one it is in the next 30 or so minutes. Back underway, if you're just joining us, nil-nil between Kalamazoo FC and Kings Hammer. Kings Hammer are moving from right to left on your screen, and they're all blacks. They're away strip. And Kalamazoo, out of Michigan, are in sky blue shirts. Paul Hernandez sends it long, and he'll get it back again. On the pass from Ben Damji, substitute striker. Damji gets it again. Left side. And it's moved out left. Alba cuts inside. Has a go. Tried to find the near post, but couldn't. Early chance from Reese Alba. Reese Alba, as you can see there, likes to come in onto his right foot, just cutting in. It was a very, very acute angle. There was pressure. Just slicing round it a little bit too much, but why not have a go from there? It was well covered there anyway by Hunt. Hunter Morse. Given away. Attacking chance now. Oh, the back heel didn't quite come off for Alba. Hegji. Turning is Torito. Hegji again. Is it to the last line of defense? ART. Lawless ART will play it to Ethan Garvey. And Garvey's got space six foot seven, towering figure defensively. Sent very long. And on side is Gumbale. Tried to cross it in and didn't have the technique that time. Nothing going early on. It was a good ball played in there by Cam Torito, looking for Gumbali, just on the swi switch in the point of attack there. Gumbali just managing to get to it. He was under pressure there by Adrian Lara, but just took a, a, an almighty swing at it, trying to get the ball across. He might have just taken a touch, maybe cut into the penalty box. He could have been brought down because the players are tied here. I mean, you might get a penalty out of it. That's true. You kind of want to play to a mistake if you can because it's certainly more likely than usual that we see one. Flicked header taken down is Cyrus Harmon, and Kalamazoo's bench would like a red card for that. I don't think he was beyond the last defender, but we'll see what the referee decides. He's got a decision to make. I think we'll see a card in any case. It's Burlew, and the referee will opt to say, hey, no more of that. No card, but it's your last warning. Yeah, Burlew just needs to walk away from the situation because he doesn't need to go in the book, but it, it was a you know, professional foul there on Harmon. And, ha you know, Harmon, he's, he's been an issue. He's been a problem since he's been on. He's causing problems for the, the back line there of King's Hammer. We'll see if... Kalamazoo can create more problems. A short, quick free kick. Sent out wide. Space for Corona. Plays it along the goal line. Calvo Salinas lays it off. Whelan! How has he missed that? An incredible stop. Was it the goalkeeper? Perhaps a deflection? If that was Bryant Pratt again, 
I mean, I, I don't know what to say. How do you beat this goalkeeper? Well, look at that nifty little pass in there for Calvo Salinas. Salinas playing the ball across, goes all the way through. But what a fantastic save there off Whelan. What a brilliant save. But in behind him diving, you know, you, you had Robbie Bur Burlew was just diving in behind him just to try and clear that as well. So that's commitment for you. Last ditch defending is the name of the game. O'Rourdon plays it in back post. Just touched by Pratt, and it was enough to knock it off of Matt Whelan and out for a goal kick. We'll see one of those substitutions that we mentioned for Kalamazoo. They had options. They'll play one of them. And to me, it looks like one of the Dargento brothers. It's going to be Corona stepping off. We know that. And that might just be Gaetano Dargento, if I'm not mistaken. So interesting, Corona, a left midfielder, a winger by trade, will come off. Dargento, who also plays in midfield, can play defensively, can also play on that wide side, which I think he will this time. He'll hop in as well. He's played in five matches this season. Goes to Bowling Green State, plays for the Falcons there. He's an aviation major. And Kings Hammer are back on the ball. Sent forward. Reinhardt. Holds on. Still going. Taken down. Referee says no, and we play on. King Sammer have a few who have traveled all the way to Des Moines, made the eight or so hour drive, and they're not pleased. What a flick on by Matt Whelan. Cyrus Harmon is offside. And that could have been the decisive moment. That was a lovely little piece of technique there by Whelan, just flicking the ball on there for... Cyrus Harmon, but Harmon was offside. He's quick. The back line for Kings Hammer, they held the line, and Harmon just drifted a few yards offside there. But, you know, looking at that last piece, passage of play there, you know, Reinhardt was looking for a penalty on the edge of the box. I don't think he was clipped. I think he just went to ground looking for something just outside the penalty box. I can see that the shape looks like for for. Kalamazoo, they switched to a 4-4-2 and they're keeping Whelan and Cyrus up front, 4-4-2 diamond. Matt Lockwood has it. He's got players to aim for in the middle. Goes for a cross, hits the hand of ART, but referee says no, we'll keep playing. Flicked on, Calvo Salinas on the half volley. It's over the bar and a goal kick. Transitional moment there, Danny. Again, another chance as you look here. Lockwood has been absolutely dangerous the whole game. Lovely ball. And not, not, I don't think there was anything there. It, it, it wasn't extended, but he had a bit of technique by Salinas just going over the bar. He just didn't quite get it. Important to make the distinction between a ball that hits someone's hand and what's ruled as a handball and an infraction. A handball has to be generally, according to the referee, in their mind, ball to hand contact or hand to ball and on top of that it has to be advantageous and it has to put your hand in an unnatural position I think that's the the key in that moment that wasn't met that requirement it has to put you your, your hand has to be in an unnatural position and that time ART's hand was not Harmon it's going forward again for Kalamazoo takes on a player has some help and King's Hammer will win the ball shaking off Harmon but losing the ball that time is Reinhardt and falling down directly on Calvo Salinas. I don't know who is that, man. Looks like it might be Chase Trine. But when you look at this, yeah, the replay is out of your picture book. Harmon just being bounced off there. But you can tell tied legs as the second challenge goes in. And, and you know, at the end of the day, Strine realized that. He just put his hands up, you know, just pat... <laughs> Gave him a pat on the back. Strine will win the ball in midfield. And wants to go forward quickly for Kalamazoo. Moves it out left, Harmon. Harmon takes on a couple of players. Ball in the box, deflected. Corner for Kalamazoo. Now could this be the moment with Paula Fang not running forward this time? He's, he's, he's walking forward and... The players are in no hurry to get that ball out there to the corner spot. And it looks like it's going to be 
Royden to take it. I think he'll probably go far post here. He's going to look for Fang. I wonder if, if Fang should maybe ha starting position should be a little bit higher there, just off the shoulder of Robbie Burlew. I think that would be better for him, to be honest with you. Ball comes in. It's short. Whelan back for O'Rourden. Slides in, but doesn't win the ball. And King's Hammer potentially can break. Damji is all the way forward. If King's Hammer can find him. Excellent touch, but it puts him out of play over the touch line and a Kalamazoo throw. I want to remind you, we're nine minutes in to the first half of extra time. We'll have two halves no matter what. Not golden goal format. We'll see two 15-minute halves. And after that point, after all 30 minutes, if we're still tied up at whatever score we end up at, we'll go to penalty kicks. Five kicks for each team. And again, if we're still tied, we'll go to sudden death. Harmon. Gets it on the end of another long ball for Kalamazoo. Keeps it in play. Looking to beat his marker, Garvey. Top of the box. A shot, and it's saved again by Bryant Pratt. Not a whole lot of power on it, but good direction. Pratt had to get across his goal. Yeah, good save there. Not enough power on the strike, to be honest that with you, from Whelan. I think Whelan was looking to place it and bend it round Bryant Pratt with his right foot, but again... On the far side, it was really fantastic piece of technique here from Harmon getting onto that ball, laying it off uh, while he was g under the guard of Garvey. But you look at that. Bryant Pratt with a fantastic save to his left-hand side. And it looks like they're going to get another water break. I believe they will. Yeah, it does look to be the case. While... Bryant Pratt receives a little bit of medical attention. For me, the way that he's clutching his stomach, it seems to be just to him getting the wind knocked out of him. Maybe the way that he took that ball, he did take it right there to the stomach. And that's all that was required, so we'll be back underway. Bryant Pratt's got it. And now to take it, Ethan Garvey. Moves it forward. Cam Torito. Torito turns back towards his own goal. Nearly gave it away there to Harmon. And a substitution now coming off Maloon Gumbale. And replacing him is Sam Robinson. So we mentioned that. That was the last outfield player that King Samer had at their disposal. Sam Robinson, a winger by trade, does go out to that right wing. He's from Oxford, Ohio. Plays for Northern Kentucky, a transfer from the Cincinnati Bearcats. And he'll get into action quickly. Winning the ball. Here come King's Hammer. Excellent defending that time. By Corona. A lot, I should say. And cleared away by Efan. You can see how the gaps are opening up between the lines. And players are moving very, very slowly. A couple of knocks, fatigue, cramp is built in. And I'd, it could, I mean, if this goes to a penalty shootout... I'd, Credit to both teams. I mean, they've definitely played well both. They've fought hard, been very, very determined. Long throw in potentially. That's what everyone's set up for. In it goes. Not quite long enough. Headed right back out, though. Across this time. Far post. And Hunter Morris was in the right place at the right time, but a dangerous chance from Ben Hegge on the head. Yeah, I was very surprised there. Ethan Garvey, one of the tallest players on the pitch, is taking the throw, and when you need someone like that in the box, the ball came out to him again. He delivered over the goalkeeper's head, Morris. Whelan plays it through. Hartman, can he get a shot away? Excellent touch. Kalamazoo won a penalty, but that looks like a clean tackle to me. Excellent defending out for a corner. Yeah, the outstretched legs of... Ethan Garvey just managing to knock that ball. What a great ball played in there with the outside of the boot. But Ethan Garvey did well here just to play the ball out for a corner. Calvo Salinas from Madrid, Spain is ready to put this one in. And it goes for Kalamazoo. Out swinger. A touch to it, but nothing sent towards goal from Matt Whelan. O'Rourden, Lockwood, the header, and it has beaten the keeper. Took a deflection, but it didn't matter. The opening goal for Kalamazoo in the 102nd minute from Adrian Lara. Kalamazoo on the board. 
Well, as you look at this, uh, unfortunate there from Ethan Garvey because what a great ball there by Lockwood. Ball coming in. Lara deflects off Garvey. Keeper, Bryant going one way, just ball going the opposite way off the crossbar and into the goal, putting Kalamazoo 1-0 up. I'm surprised they have enough energy to go running off to the sideline for a celebration or maybe just a little sip of water to get back into this match. But y you can always conjure a bit of energy, though, after a goal, that's for sure. Certainly. And as you mentioned, Ethan Garvey got the decisive touch on that one off of his head in the end. I wonder if they'll give it to Lada because he got the initial head on it. It'll be interesting to decide what they rule, but either way, off the head of Lada and off the head of Ethan Garvey, Kalamazoo FC are ahead. Just a minute to go now until halftime of extra time. Still plenty of time for King's Hammer to find their way back in, but that's a big blow to their chances in this one. Burley will play it back for Garvey. Garvey moves it to Aerty. Aerty takes his time, looking to pick out a pass. Long aerial ball. Sam Robinson. Robinson well defended by Gaetano D'Argento. And that'll turn into a corner kick, I believe. D'Argento could not keep it in play. So a corner kick now for King Sam and Kalamazoo just kind of playing a keep away game. Try and run as much time off the clock as they can. And they're going to get the big lad in there, Ethan, Ethan Garvey, for the corner. And it looks like Reese Albaugh to take it. He will. Puts it in. Garvey's in the area. Gets there. Off the post. And that's the equalizer. Garvey gives one up in his own goal. Says, no matter. I'll go back on the other side and put one in. Make up for my mistake. It's 1-1 just like that. You look at this delivery here by Orbar, perfect delivery. Matchup on the far post was not the right matchup, but Ethan Garvey making up for his own goal, but nodding it past the goalkeeper off the post. Morse couldn't do anything like anything to anything with that, to be honest with you. And and be back to one one here, and it still came on. We talk about those five minute differences in between goals and that, Danny. It's uh, this is it, you know. That was hardly a one-minute difference. Who could write a storyline like this? Kalamazoo 1, Kings Hammer 1, with possibly the last touch of the first half of extra time. Adrian Lara with it for Kalamazoo. Incredible roller coaster of emotions for Ethan Garvey. I think they're going to credit him with the own goal on the first one that Kalamazoo scored but they're certainly going to credit him for the one that he scored for his own team for King's Hammer. We've already played the one minute of extra time that we've got here. And the referee will signal that's the end of an eventful 15 minutes. Took us 105 to get our first goal, and now we've got two. Funny how this game works. 1-1 one, one between Kalamazoo FC and King's Hammer FC. A delight for the neutral, and we hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Justin Forster and myself, Danny Kajula, taking a break. But we'll be back in a couple of minutes right here on CISN. With over 260 beers on tap, El Bait Shop isn't just another craft beer bar. It's the best. Beer lovers know, El Bait Shop, 200 Southwest 2nd, Des Moines.
the largest selection of German beer in the world? You'll find it at the Hessen House. From Doppelbox to Oktoberfest to Hefeweizens and Dunkels, there's no passport needed for the deliciously different beer and food at the Hessen House. So grab your friends and make it a fun night out. The Hessen House, 4th and Court, Des Moines. It takes a village to empower a young person to achieve their full potential. Yet today in America, one in three kids are growing up without a mentor. Together, we can change this. You can be that someone for a young person by becoming a mentor. Join the village, big brothers, big sisters. Become a big today. Hundred and five minutes, still nothing to separate these two sides. Underway for 15 more. Hoping to decide before penalty kicks who ends up taking this one. 1-1 one, one between Kings Hammer FC and Kalamazoo FC. Danny Cotula with Justin Forster alongside me at Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. And that didn't take long already. A chance for Kings Hammer going forward. If you're just joining us, the first goal of this match came in the 102nd minute on a own goal from Ethan Garvey. Now Kalamazoo going the other way. Cyrus Harmon, well defended by ART. Harmon will pick it back up. No opportunity to recap where we've gone because we're already making more goal scoring chances early on in this second period of extra time. Kalamazoo getting forward with O'Rourdon. Harmon, back to O'Rourdon. Switches the play. Whelan wants to get his head on it. Excellent work by Robbie Burlew. Not being bullied that time. Wins the ball back. So we've got a half second, maybe, to be able to give you an update on how we got here. Kalamazoo got the opener on Ethan Garvey's own goal. But Garvey decided he wasn't done with scoring for the day. The very next minute, 103rd, he was able to come back and go the other way and grab the equalizer on a header. Both his own goal and his goal that counts for King Sammer were on headers. And that's how we've gotten ourselves to 1-1. One, one. Players on the pitch for both sides. For Kalamazoo, the four seed, Hunter Morrison goal. Russo, Efong, and Lara are the center backs, and they've got work to do. Here come King's Hammer the other direction. Couldn't quite make anything happen. Nice defending by Efong there. And that will result in a Kalamazoo goal kick. In defensive midfield, Dara O'Riordan has played every single minute of this one. Chase Strine has as well. Matt Lockwood and Gaetano D'Argento outside substitution in that outside midfield spot. Up top, it's Matt Whelan and Cyrus Harmon. And the attacking midfielder is Eduardo Calvo Salinas. Bryant Pratt's in goal for King Samer. Ethan Garvey and Lalas Ayerti are your center backs. Robbie Burlew, the right back, Polarandas on the left side of defense. Ben Hegge and Cam Torito, both substitutes in defensive midfield. Sam Robinson and Reese Alba are outside wingers. And Taylor Reinhardt and Ben Damji are the two up front. King Samer looking to make something happen again. Can they take the lead for the first time today? An error at the back. And it's a wide open goal. An error leads to an incredible finish. Sam Robinson, the substitute. Kings Hammer lead 2-1. Just against the run of play there. What a fantastic goal here. As we look at this again. Error at the back there. Communication problems. Sam Robinson's with a cross into the path of that man, Ben Damji. My apologies there to Danny because I did say it was <laughs> Sam Robinson. I was all excited by how the passage of play came about, but Sam Robinson, the substitute, did immaculately well there just to follow up. But again, it was a miscommunication at the back. Yeah, certainly Robinson who set it up. Excellent work to just get onto that ball. It looked like it was going over the line, but it's that extra effort in this heat in this difficult circumstance, and it only took three minutes for Kings Hammer to get their first lead of this game. Kalamazoo coming back the other way with a vengeance. Harmon got players inside. He'll find one. Whelan just over the bar. What a chance for another next minute equalizer. Well, this 30 minutes have been so exciting up till now. I mean, goal to goal, action, transitional moments. As we look at it, this again, yeah, the ball was laid in there for. Matt Whelan just a blaze over the bar. But like, like earlier on with the initial first goal, 
when Kalamazoo scored, it was within five minutes that King's Hammer equalized through Garvey. And again, the same situation has happened here. And lucky for King's Hammer, Matt Whelan blew it over the bar. And if very fortunate for King's Hammer, Kalamazoo did a fantastic job. Just uh, that, that instant counter. It didn't take them long. That mentality that they've got, that they can compete with anybody in any situation in front of them. They're certainly not going to give this one up. Ten and a half more minutes of regular time in extra time to play, but with the injury to Robbie Burlew, we imagine there will be some extra time added on. And if things end now, if this scoreline stays the way it is, Kings Hammer will move on to play Sunday at 7 here in Des Moines. Looks like a substitution in the meantime, being told that Ryan Bayless is entering on the back line. Not sure who he's replaced yet. Get you more on that situation in a moment. Still got Alessandro D'Argento and Praise Madweque who could come in as well for Kalamazoo. They haven't made too many changes. And I believe Bayless is going to go in for Federico Russo, the Venezuelan. Still on the ground is Berlu. Never something you want to see. Head coach is out there as well, or the assistant, I should say. That's Brandon Ponchak. Assistant and the operations manager for King Sammer. Does a great job in both those roles. Also a co-founder of the Ohio Valley Premier League, the OVPL as it's known, a U23 league that King's Hammer first delved into when they started adult soccer play. Started USL 2 life in 2021. This is their second season in their first playoff appearance. 6.31 p.m. local time, still 2-1. And about eight minutes of game time still to play. We imagine there will be more. Justin, just so many emotions running through the heads of both teams. How do you cut through all the, the emotional and mental noise? I'm just looking at this here because Robbie Burlew, who had Brandon and the trainer come on, gets up to, to go and carry on playing, but he has to go off the field and then back into play. <coughs> he's, he's gone through quite a lot today, to be honest with you, that kid. He's, he's been wonderful. He's played really well. And I noticed him earlier on in the, in the match. He was limping, and I know he's had cramp and that and this is gonna it's gonna be difficult now because you know we're looking at the last few minutes here and, and this is gonna feel like another 40 minutes or so to be honest with you mentally with some of those players I think especially for King Sammer they're gonna feel like this eight to ten minutes is a lot longer than that Harmon has been on so many long passes and this time not able to hold on King Sammer with some valuable possession Lockwood trying to win the ball back. He can't. Sent long. Hernandez. Excellent. Headed intersection. Still a chance for King's Hammer. That shot is saved by Hunter Morrison. He'll look to get this one out quickly. Does so. Looks like the substitute, Ryan Bayless. Bayless out of Glasgow, Scotland. Tries to play Harmon in close. That one's sent back. Challenge for the ball. Kalamazoo comes away winners. F on. Center of the pitch, Bayless. F on again. Now it's Chase Strong. Carlos Salinas, back where it came from. Chase Strong again. Cross in, Whelan couldn't get there. Picked up by Pratt. Just killing a bit of time here, as you can see, is Brian Pratt. He's had a fantastic game so far. He's, he's kept King's hammer in the match with some fantastic saves, immaculate saves, to be honest with you. But you can tell the tired legs out there with Kalamazoo, and they're being pressed, but they just it's just finding those energy moments that, are going to help them burst through. Is it going to be that man, Matt 
Lockwood on, out on the right-hand side that's just going to go on one of those runs down the right and deliver, as you can see him going into this tackle. As you mentioned him, Justin, he wins the ball back, plays it for Harmon. Harmon can move out to his left. He's got Whelan if he wants him. Instead, he goes alone, loses it, and King's Hammer will win the ball back. Excellent challenge. In midfield, space for King's Hammer to go forward and get the dagger if they want to. Reese Albaugh will hold up play for a moment, gives to Sam Robinson. Got the assist on the go-ahead goal for now. Robinson still with it, takes a couple deflections off of blue shirts. But Robinson still going with it. Backwards for Alba. Nice touch around a defender. Still moving forward. Reese Alba. All the way to the left. A shot and it's well off target. And it looks like there's just been a positional change and I, th I believe it's got something to do with Robbie Burlew's injury because they can't make another change, King's Hammer. And I'm just trying to identify who's gone in at left back for him on the far side. I think it's Reese Alba. And they've almost switched, haven't they? Alba was playing left wing earlier on. But Alba looks like he's moved to right back at this point. Paul Hernandez might have switched sides as well as an outside back. Dargento's got it. He'll chest it down and it's sent all the way back. Ryan Bayless. Chase Dry. Advances it forward. Calvo Salinas moves it back to Bayless. Strine. Harmon loses out. Alba gets there first. Sent back in. Dargento. Could put a ball in. Gets to his strongest right foot. Back post. Stays in. No. Referee signals that it's out of play and a goal kick for King Samer. More opportunity for them to just let a little bit of clock drain off. Yeah, they were looking for something out of that, but definitely not went out for a goal kick. As you look at this again, Arbar stepping in, winning that initial first challenge, should have stepped back into position right away. As you look at this ball come across, no foul there. Hernandez and Matt Whelan were going up for it at the same time, went out for a goal kick. And, and as you can see here, Brian Pratt is just going to kill some time here for King's Hammer. Why not? He's an experienced player, plays for Indiana. One of the Hoosiers and men's soccer team. Header won by Kalamazoo. Important area of the picture. Whelan heads it back. O'Rourdon wants a cross. Gets it past Hernandez, but no farther. Cam Torito that time on the back line was able to clear. And out for a throw in rather than a corner. I think this is the moment that Kalamazoo need to push players forward. Coming up to three minutes left of this match, plus probably one minute of additional time but they need to get players forward if they're going to make something happen ball sent in Carlos Salinas moves it out to the corner flag plays it back Lockwood Lockwood loses it King Sammer looking to get it out and they can't but will we see a foul or yeah I think we will free kick yeah. for King Sammer looks like it just a bit of shirt pulling but earlier on Salinas with a Great piece of skill. They're just spinning on the ball just to lay it off, keeping it inbounds, just showing his grit, determination to just show some leadership, keep Kalamazoo going. Look at the players. They're just so tired. You can see that. But it's now all or nothing coming up to two minutes left here, Danny. Long ball well outside of the target. Throw in for Kalamazoo. Coming down to crunch time. 2-1 for King's Hammer. Lockwood hooks it long. Harmon gets there, and an important touch from ART. Very important touch there from ART. Thrown in quickly by Harmon, headed out. Ben Damji came all the way back to get that one away. Harmon nearly got on the end of that pass. Kalamazoo still trying to be creative, find ways to get the ball in the box. They've got to get a goal to keep their season alive. Intercepted, and again, King's Hammer winning the ball back for moments and just clearing it away just as quickly. Yeah, and you can see Cam, Cam Torito wearing jersey number six is on the back line there next to Aitu and, and Ethan Garvey. Right side, chance to cross in. Excellent piece of dribbling. 
Whelan, top of the box. We know he loves to shoot. He will go for goal! Are you kidding me? With one minute to go, Matt Whelan, of course it was him. Ninth goal of the season, and this one is most important of the year. 2-2. Two, two. Did I speak about that guy, Lockwood, earlier on, Matt Lockwood? Look at his determination here, playing a ball in there to Whelan. All the effort. What a great, absolute hurler. Banger in the top corner. Brian Pratt couldn't do anything with that. And it just takes a little piece of action and moments like we talk about marginal, marginal moments of a game. Well, it's absolutely storybook stuff between Kalamazoo FC and Kings Hammer. We're tied at two. Nil, nil, we'll remind you, at 90 minutes. We went to extra time. We had a pair of goals earlier on, and now we've got a pair more. Two in each half of extra time, and Harmon wants another one for Kalamazoo. Could they go forward and get a third? He's brought down before he could do anything, and surely we'll see some kind of disciplinary action. Yes, we will. A yellow card. And has it gone, I believe, to Ben Hegge in central midfield? We'll see it again. Yeah, Hegge is the one who's just trailing Harmon here. And this clip right there. Yep, yeah, he'll just grab him with the arm. And it, it makes sense that he did it, but it is a worthy yellow card. But think about this. Did he have to? Because he had cover coming across there. And, you know, he's, now he's got himself a yellow card. He's got to be careful, though. You know, we're coming up to 30 minutes. But when you look at game management, it could have been the moment, Danny. You could be right with that particular moment? Yeah, at this point, not a whole lot to lose by picking up a yellow. Four minutes of added time. Chance for either team to get a third in these 30 minutes of extra time. Matt Whelan will have the first crack at it. Goes for goal directly, a low effort. Tried to catch the defense off guard, but wasn't enough to beat Bryant Pratt. 31st minute of added time. We've played 121 minutes of soccer at a very, very hot Valley Stadium. Neither team ready to give up. And just three minutes ago, it was 2-1 in favor of King Sammer. Everything going their way. Looked inevitable, but no, not on this day. On the ball, Ben Hegge. King Sammer could still grab a third and put a dagger in the hearts of Kalamazoo. And it comes, this one is saved easily in the end by Hunter Morris. He'll get it out quickly. Both teams want to go forward. Neither side want to settle for penalties. Cam Torito for King's Hammer. Inviting pressure from Harmon. Not recommended. Harmon gets the ball back, but he does commit a foul. And ART puts his arms up like, why would you do that? Why would you potentially give that ball away? 32nd minute at a time. See a Royal Mile replay on this one. I was just thinking, why is Cam Torito actually, why didn't he play it back to the goalkeeper, especially with Harmon just sprinting down on his left shoulder. <laughs> and Bryant Pratt making it clear, pointing to him, saying, I got it. <laughs> Let me pick that one up. He can use his hands, of course, which Torito cannot. But all's well that ends well for King Sammer. It stays 2-2. Pratt gets it away across midfield. Out of play it goes on this near touch line in front of us. Gaetano D'Argento for Dara O'Rourdon. Paul Effon, nearly intercepted by Ben Damji, but instead it's some space down the right side for Kalamazoo to move forward. Harmon, not a great first touch, but he does get it back to his intended target. Lara got it to him, and now Harmon's got it again. Gives it away, and here come King's Hammer. Do they have enough space and enough manpower to get forward for another attack? About one more minute before penalties are where we go to decide this. Lala Sayerti, very long ball, high in the air. Who wants it? One by Bayless. Gets it back on a nice one-two across midfield. Whelan with a good first touch, well defended by Reese Albaugh, but now Harmon's on it. The danger man plays it out left. Calvo Salinas, left-footed efforts. Important save by Pratt. How many times have we said that today? Corner kick for Kalamazoo. Wow, that was a great save there by Pratt, like he's done all day. But as you look at this, Garvey should have just got on with it and recovered Harmon. Great ball out to the left. Salinas being covered there by Reese Albar. What a great save there by Brian Pratt. 15 seconds before we hit 124 minutes. 
This could be it. Cross to come in for Kalamazoo. Could they complete an incredible comeback? Ball to the back post. The header goes the wrong direction. Cleared out, and the referee says that's it. We're going to penalties. 2-2 two, two and 120 minutes isn't enough to decide it. Valley Stadium will host some more drama, some more action, and we'll be here to give it to you. A very quick break, and we'll be right back on CISN. With over 260 beers on tap, El Bait Shop isn't just another craft beer bar. It's the best. Beer lovers know, El Bait Shop, 200 Southwest 2nd, Des Moines. selection of German beer in the world, you'll find it at the Hessen House. From Doppelbox to Oktoberfest to Hefeweizens and Dunkels, there's no passport needed for the deliciously different beer and food at the Hessen House. So grab your friends and make it a fun night out. The Hessen House, 4th and Court, Des Moines. It takes a village to empower a young person to achieve their full potential. Yet today in America, one in three kids are growing up without a mentor. Together, we can change this. You can be that someone for a young person by becoming a mentor. Join the village, big brothers, big sisters. Become a big today. If you were asking yourself for a thriller on a Friday afternoon, well, your wish is granted 2-2 between Kalamazoo FC, the four seed in the Central Conference, and Kings Hammer FC, the five seed. It's been a classic four versus five matchup, and the first matchup in the Central Conference quarterfinal has set the tone for everything else to come in this conference and across the league. Again, 2-2 your score, both goals for each side, coming in extra time in those 30 minutes after the 90 that weren't enough to decide it. Now we go to penalty kicks. A reminder of how the format works. Each team will take five kicks each, and the team who has more after five is the winner. If we're tied, and given the way things have gone today, it's certainly a possibility, we'll go to sudden death, meaning after five kicks each, whichever team scores when the other team doesn't, they're the winner of it all. It comes down to nerves. It comes down to how effective you're able to be from that 12-yard penalty spot. I'll let you know who's up to kick first in a moment, and that can be pretty important uh, generally when you win the coin toss to elect which, which turn you'd like to go in, Justin. Uh, mathematically, it, it's, at, it's more advantageous to go first. It's about 60% that the team that goes first wins, and usually the reasoning for that is that you, know, you don't have those mental games of not having to worry about what you have to do to keep the game alive. If you go first, you can be a little bit more calm about it. You just put the ball in the back of the net. If you go second, you know that you know maybe your, your goal wins the match, or maybe you have to score to keep the match alive. That can prey on teams. Yeah, definitely. And so it's from a psychological point of view, it's, great. it's good to go first, score, get the initial goal, and then it's on the other, the opponents are on the back foot. So, I mean, it would be interesting here because the goalkeepers, Morse and Brian, to played, Brian Pratt have played really, really well. I've been really impressed. This could be from a couple of saves. Well, first up to take 
is number 33, the right winger turned left back, Reese Albaugh. He'll be kicking for King's Hammer. In goal, of course, is Hunter Morris, who's come up big a couple of times for Kalamazoo, and now he'll have to come up even bigger. Reese Albaugh to get things kicked off. First penalty of five for each side. Alba from K Pickerington, Ohio, steps up. Goes down the middle and the keeper goes the wrong way. One nil on penalties for King's Hammer. Well, I tell you what, struck it well, didn't mess around, ran up, smashed that ball into the back of the net. Sending Alba, sending Morse the wrong way. Just connected that straight down the middle. I mean, that's just all this fancy placement stuff and two steps, just get up there and smash it into the back of the net. That's what Matt Whelan will be hoping to do now. Looking to equalize. Keeping Kalamazoo in step with King's Hammer. He's already got a goal. He's got the one that put us level in the first place in the last minute. Can he get another one? The Irishman steps up. And he scores as well. Two low shots and two goals. We're even at one after one kick apiece. Great technique there by Matt Whelan. Stepping up there, just sending the goalkeeper prep the wrong way, placed it, great technique, into the bottom right-hand corner, looking at the screen as you can see this again. Great technique, little stutter in between, sending the goalkeeper prep the wrong way. Up next is going to be Sam Robinson, another winger for King Sammer. He'll step up and run quickly, and it's saved! Hunter Morse makes the stop, and it stays 1-1. Two kicks for King's Hammer. One for Kalamazoo, and we're level at one. Well, it looks like Morris read that well, diving to his left-hand side to save that off Robinson. As you look at this again, Robinson didn't quite connect it properly. It was a poor penalty, and it was well saved there. Second penalty taker for Kalamazoo. The substitute center back, Ryan Bayless. Not a conventional choice. Can he put it in the back of the net and put Kalamazoo ahead? He doesn't. It's over the bar. He snatched at it, and it stays 1-1. Two kicks each, one goal each. Well, Bayless blazed that over the crossbar. As, Bri as Brian was diving to his right-hand side. But look at this again. Again, it could be fatigue. Takes a look at the keeper. Smashes it right over the crossbar. He knows that it wasn't a good penalty. Up next for King's Hammer, so much pressure. How do they deal with it? Cam Torito's up. Another defender, another substitute. Didn't work out for Kalamazoo. Will it work for King's Hammer? Third kick. It's good. Knocks it past a diving goalkeeper in orange for Kalamazoo. It's 2-1 in favor of King's Hammer. Great technique, yeah. Well taken, sending Morse to the, ro the wrong way. The substitute that came into the game, Cam Torito, earning a yellow card as well. Just placed the goalkeeper the wrong way. 2-1 King Sammer now up to take the set-piece specialist, Dara O'Rourdon. Defensive midfielder, he's got four goals on the year. Can he pull one in on penalties to level things up? Quick run up. It's right at the keeper, and it's stopped. 2-1 King's Hammer. And just like that, Kalamazoo's momentum is out the window. I expected better there from O'Rourdon, to be, to be honest with you. He hit that straight at the goalkeeper. He was possibly hoping for Brian to drive the wrong, dive the wrong way. He struck it straight down the middle. Keeper didn't move, and Pratt just parried it away. Steely from Brian Pratt and goal to stay there, and it pays off for him. Next up, guy who picked up a knock earlier on. He's clutching his foot for a while, but he's healthy enough to take a penalty now. The fourth one for King's Hammer. They lead 2-1 right now. If he scores here, no more margin of error. King's Hammer would have to score everything else and hope King's Hammer misses. That's if Robbie Burlew puts this one in. Up to take the Cincinnati native hometown. Man, it's in! 3-1 Kings Hammer, and now everything is going their way. 3-1, and Kalamazoo have to score both these next two and hope that 
their next kicker for King Sammer misses. If anybody deserves a goal, it's Berlu. Sending the goalkeeper, Morse, the wrong way. Fantastic piece of technique. He's gone through all the, all the stages of cramp, you name it, in his calves. He's been playing up front yet there to switch him. Credit to him getting a goal. Gaetano D'Argento from Wayne, Illinois. He's got a score to keep Kalamazoo alive. Backs against the wall. The shot is in. We keep playing. 3-2, Kings Hammer still ahead, but now they've got to score this one to go through. Dargento, great piece of technique there. The substitute coming into the game as well. Little stutter to send the goalkeeper Pratt the wrong way. Opposite way, great technique, sticking it into the other side of the corner. Taker number five, Paul Hernandez. Outside back from Spain. He's played in USL 2 before. He's played in a penalty shootout before in the US Open Cup. Here's Hernandez, steps up. It's saved! And we're still playing! Kalamazoo with the goal on the other end will force sudden death. What a stop from Hunter Morse. Well, Morris, great, great, great save there, but not really great technique on the strike. A pressure clutch kick here coming up. Hit it with power. And here we go. We have Cyrus Harmon stepping up. Of course it's Cyrus Harmon. Monrovia, Liberia native, plays for Lindsey Wilson, the Blue Raiders, out of NAIA. One of the better programs in that division. Harmon to level this one for extra kicks. He puts it in. Top bins. And we're playing more soccer. It just can't end here at Valley. What a great penalty that was. Harmon stepping up, sending the keeper, Pratt the wrong way, opening up the hips. He put that in the top bin. Watch this again. Great technique. And he just stands there, turns around. He goes across to encourage his goalkeeper, Morris. Kalamazoo have had their backs against the wall so many times, and they refuse to give in. Now it's Taylor Reinhardt for King's Hammer. Leading goal scorer for the team. Eight goals in seven matches. Steps up, puts it over the bar. King's Hammer have now scored three from six, and if Kalamazoo scores this one, they've won it somehow. But that's how the game goes. It's, it's about moments, and as you can see here, Reinhardt just strikes it. He's trying to come across his body. He's leaning back, and you, as he struck it, you could see it was going over the bar. But... We've got, when you look at this, you've got Pratt and goal, and he's always up for, for a save here and there. And you never know, it, tides could change again. They've changed already twice. Six foot four center back Paul Effong from Braun Lyon, France, could win it for Kalamazoo. Short run up. Goes for goal, it's saved! We're still not done. Bryant Pratt has made an incredible save for the umpteenth time today. We're still playing. Seventh taker each. Danny, nobody wants to win this game. As a fun steps up, no power in it. But I tell you what, Pratt diving to his left. And he just looks up. He goes, is somebody going to finish this game for us? Talking to his teammates. Ben Damji is up next. Mason, Ohio native. Went to million, William Mason High School there. A Kentucky Wildcat, can he score here? Yes, he can, and the keeper was so close. Hunter Morris stove the right way, but just couldn't claw it out. Damji scores, 4-3, King's Hammer. Could this be the moment, but what a great penalty there, Damji. Stepping up, placing the ball into the top corner. Nice little run up there, keeper diving, Morris diving the right way, didn't quite get to that. You wonder if that right there was the match winner. 4-3, the King's Hammer lead. Up next, Adrian Lara, center back from Shorewood, Illinois. Has to level it now. He scores two! Four scores, three misses, each side. Nothing can separate these two. We're still playing. Great penalty there. This game's going to go on. Uh, what time do the floodlights switch on at Valley Stadium? I'm not sure, but we do have another game after. But great technique there from Lara. 
sending prep the wrong way. Well, now there's three more penalty takers that can go before it turns to the goalkeepers. Ben Hedges up next for King Sammer. His shot is saved. Another stop. Morse waited till the last minute there to see what Bamji would do. And I tell you what, he did wait. There was a little bit of a delay there, and he dove the right way. Going across your body, you've got to really smash that ball. You've got to strike it with technique, especially when you go across your body. This could win it. Eduardo Calvo Salinas can end this and move Kalamazoo forward with this kick right here, 12 yards away. No! Puts it over the bar! You can't make this up! Is there money on this game, Danny? Is somebody <laughs> taking a bet? Because I tell you what, that has to be the worst penalty I've seen in a long time. But Salinas leaning away from it, blazing the ball over the bar, as you can see here. Pratt going the wrong way. And again, we carry on. Ethan Garvey's up next. He's played with Crescent City FC of the Gulf Coast Premier League last year. Now he's with King's Hammer in an incredible moment. So important. The Evansville ace from New Orleans, Louisiana. Can he put King's Hammer ahead? Yes, he can. Right down the middle. 5-4 King's Hammer after nine penalties. Well, Garvey scored an own goal, scored a tying goal, equalizing goal in regulation time. And now, could this have been the winning penalty here for King's Hammer? He just dinks it over Morse down the middle as Morse dive to his left. Well, it's either Matt Lockwood or Chase Strine, and it will be Lockwood to step up. After this, if Lockwood scores, there's one more field player for each team, and then the keepers. But we haven't gotten there yet. Matt Lockwood has to score to keep this game alive. 5-4 King's Hammer. Lockwood from St. George, Utah. It's in! Roof of the net! Ice water in his veins, and it's five apiece. Honestly, I didn't see Lockwood missing at all. He's so composed. He's had a fantastic game, sending Pratt the wrong way. But what, what a fantastic penalty. Looks at the ref, looks at the ball. Bam, top corner. We've seen some great penalties into the top bin, that's for sure, today. Justin, I love this game. So do I. I tell you what, this is what it's about. 5-5. Five, five. Tenth penalty for King's Hammer. Lalas Ayerty. Scores. Top bins again. Wow. Ayerty. What a brilliant penalty. Ayerty sticks the ball in the top corner. The amount of penalties, I think there's been five that have gone to the keeper's left-hand side, top bin. But look at that. Fantastic technique. Opens the hips up. And that's what it's about. Bit of power behind it, sending Morse the wrong way. Kicker number 10 for Kalamazoo, Chase Strine. To keep it alive. Saved! That's it! 20 penalties later, Kings Hammer FC are moving through to Sunday. Unbelievable save there. I knew it was going to be, it was going to be prep. It had to be him. He's had a fantastic game. Ayotu's had a fantastic game. But look at this. Again, across your body. You need power on that. And with the outstretched hands, the palm of Pratt just palming that ball away, Danny. Well, he won seven state titles with Ohio Premier, his club team. This is probably the biggest win that he has ever felt. 6-5 is the final after 10 penalties each and that's what it took for King's Hammer to separate themselves. Uh, Justin, we'll take a quick break and come right back in a moment with more post-game thoughts from an emotional roller coaster, an incredible ride. It's been a pleasure bringing it to you on CISN, and we'll see you guys in just a moment with our final thoughts.
With over 260 beers on tap, El Bait Shop isn't just another craft beer bar. It's the best. Beer lovers know El Bait Shop, 200 Southwest 2nd, Des Moines. largest selection of German beer in the world, you'll find it at the Hessen House. From Doppelbox to Oktoberfest to Hefeweizens and Dunkels, there's no passport needed for the deliciously different beer and food at the Hessen House. So grab your friends and make it a fun night out. The Hessen House, 4th and Court, Des Moines. It takes a village to empower a young person to achieve their full potential. Yet today in America, one in three kids are growing up without a mentor. Together, we can change this. You can be that someone for a young person by becoming a mentor. Join the village, big brothers, big sisters. Become a big today. Still trying to wrap our heads around what we've just seen at Valley Stadium. 6-5 on penalties after a 2-2 draw in regular time between Kalamazoo FC and Kings Hammer FC. Justin, I mean, give us that last penalty. What was running through everyone's heads, how it turned out? Well, unbelievable here. I mean, a penalty across your body, it, it, it's hard. You've got to strike it. But my man of the match is Brian Pratt. Not just from the penalty saves, but he's had a wonderful game. He's been outstanding. He's pulled off some immaculate saves. So... Credit to him, and I think they deserve it at the end of the day. Yeah, Brian Pratt, exceptional in regular time, in extra time, made a couple of big saves, and of course, none bigger than that penalty save right there. Justin Forrester joining myself, Danny Catula, for final postgame coverage. As you mentioned, your man of the match, Brian Pratt, on the other side, Hunter Morse. Excellent goalkeeping from him as well. So unfortunate he doesn't get to uh, to be credited or enjoy a win tonight for his troubles. Uh, you've got to give credit to Kalamazoo and the whole team, but you know, uh, you know, Hunter Morris played. He had a fantastic game as well, and I, you know, I, it, it's a tragic way to go out, to be honest with you. And I mean, both teams didn't deserve to lose, but one has to go. And I mean, the heat they endured in that, but at the end of the day, there has to be a winner. Shows you the emotions on both sides of this game that we love so much. The beautiful game has been none more beautiful this season than the game we just witnessed. Again, 6-5 on penalties. Each team takes 10. And in the end, King's Hammer comes away with the win. They're moving on to play the winner of our game up next. Second part of our doubleheader. We're not going away. You shouldn't either here on CISN. Des Moines Menace taking on Caw Valley FC. That one slated to kick off at about 8 p.m. Central Time. We'll be right back with you for that one. But until then, with Justin Forrester joining me, my name is Dandy Katula saying thanks for joining us. Have a fantastic rest of your evening and be blessed.